This is the non-resident hunting panel for OTC non-resident DIY hunters. Let's do it. There exists a threat from anti-hunting groups to politicians trying to give our land away, and we won't stand for it. Those vast western landscapes provide the space for our wildlife to thrive and a place for hunters and anglers to fuel the fire that sparks their soul. In this show, we share our love of hunting, fishing, and conservation. Here, we provide the foundation to meet these threats through passion and the grit of the American outdoorsman. Welcome to the Western Huntsman Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 70. This is Jim Huntsman, your host, and I'm coming at you from the Broken Tine studio right here in Hayden, Idaho. Welcome to the show, guys. This is going to be a really good discussion on, uh, I, I basically, I kind of wanted to get a bunch of expert non-resident hunters, those uh, that travel out of state and uh, go hunting, and they do it basically all over the counter type kind of tags, or, you know, sometimes they're draw tags, whatever. Uh, point being is they're doing it themselves. They're not hiring a guide. They are traveling sometimes thousands of miles on the road or by plane to go hunt. And that is something that I think a lot of people get this mindset hurdle built up in their, their own minds about how difficult or how expensive or how the logistics work of going to another state to hunt. And so this isn't like a let's promote non-resident hunting. It's a those of you that are really interested in doing some non-resident hunting out of state. Here's here's the breakdown on, as to how we all do it and, and how these guys specifically do it because they, they pretty much do it every year and they're successful and they're really good at what they do and they really plan and prep and uh, have a way of, you know, kind of getting the message across that you don't need to build this up to some complicated, overly expensive thing in your mind. If uh, If you are interested in doing it, Put it together and do it. You can. Uh, there's still even options for this year to to consider it. So hopefully this episode helps. You guys are gonna really like this one. Uh, I've got my buddy Logan Erdman who is from uh, Ohio, and he's a custom knife maker and he travels out west uh, every year. And he, whether he's going after mule deer or elk or whatever, he's uh, he's go he goes to Colorado a lot and he comes up to Idaho a lot. Uh, all the way from Colorado, and he drives. Uh, next on the list is Guy Duplanchier. If I said that right, I probably didn't. I pro- I've, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how many times he tells me how to pronounce his last name. I never get it right. Uh, but Guy is the host of Western Contours podcast, and he's out of California, and he travels um, frequently every year to hunt elk. And uh, just a just a great host. Check out his podcast, by the way. That's Western Contours podcast. I'm a huge fan. I'm also a huge fan of On Point Podcast, and that brings the third guest into this, and uh, that is going to be with with Garrett Weaver, and he does the On Point Podcast, a lot of really good perspective. If you guys heard an episode I had Garrett on um, a couple weeks ago to talk about, you know, well, well, the idea was we were spent, we were supposed to spend a bunch of time talking about like woodsmanship and instead we spent most of the time just talking about hunting and in, in general so it's a good conversation either way so check that one out uh, all these guys have been on the show before and they're great guys with a lot of great perspective and, and it's super interesting to listen to how they kind of break down how they plan and prep and and get all this together to do these out-of-state non-resident hunts so i i hope you guys enjoy it this episode is brought to you by phelps game calls phelps is the uh, call of choice for, for the Western Huntsman, guys, what I really like about Phelps Game Calls is the people. That's my favorite thing about Phelps Game Calls. Uh, Jason Phelps and Dirk Durham, these are just salt-of-the-earth kind of people. Jason took this company from nothing in his garage and has built it into one of the biggest brands in the hunting industry uh, in a short time. It's just the you know quintessential American story, and they put out great products uh, American made stuff and it all is it, it's effective it works and you can save 10% by using promo code Huntsman 10 at checkout and I'd encourage you to check it out I do want to throw out one more promo code for you guys by the way it's always in the show notes but um, I want to bring up because of the time of year and the nature of you know the bear season for those of you that, that are baiting if uh, 
you want some of the best attractants on the market for your bear baits. This isn't the actual bait you're putting in. So you you know you could you could choose to put whatever you want in your in your barrel. Let's say you're using dog food or popcorn or um, Wonder Bread or whatever. The, this is stuff that you add to your bait as an attractant, and it's very very potent. You will uh. <laughs> If you do order some, get a syllable, syllable container because I mean it'll it'll light up your whole house. You, you're you you will smell it. So keep it out in the shop or, or the garage or something like that. But anyway, Batum 907 is who I use for that, and they have quite the track record of success in attracting bears. They also have other types of uh, you know attractants and lures and stuff. But um, I'd encourage you to check it out if you're bear baiting. It'll it'll really go a long way in helping you get those bears in and get more than just like one option, right? You're going to get a bunch of bears coming in. And so Batum907, if you go to Batum907.com and use promo code Huntsman10, you will get 10% off on their website. And this is just something because I had the owner on the show, Jess Gann, and uh, she is a great lady, a uh, great business owner, and an, and an even better bear hunter. And so she came on the show and just as a favor gave us a promo code for just our listeners uh, for 10% off. And I, you know, I don't get anything out of it. This is just uh, to help you guys. And I, th- I thought because it's this time of year, uh, it'd be good for you guys to know that information. On a uh, on another note, um, I want you guys to know that as far as being like a seasoned, highly professional podcast host, I am not one of those. And you're going to hear that in this episode because what I did is I set everything up and I, I'm kind of giving everybody, you know, we're talking about microphones and recording and this and that and the software that I'm using for, for getting everybody kind of on at the same time. Um, I forgot to turn my microphone on. So it is sounding like I'm talking into a tin can because it's just coming through my laptop. And for that, I really am sorry. Uh, I don't know how I did that other than it's just who I am. I forget, you know, important shit like turning your microphone on. So sorry about that. Bear with that uh, little audio technicality there. Uh, still comes in clear and everything. It's just not, you know, the the nice professional sounding, you know, the microphone sound that you usually get when you actually know what you're doing, which I don't. So sorry about that with this episode. <laughs> Lastly, I do just want to throw in a quick reminder that uh, our gear shop is live with Tacticam. And uh, the Tacticam gear is basically, it's all available on, on my website, thewesternhuntsman.com. Uh, the, the point to doing that versus going to some other website to buy Tacticam products um, is going to be we are taking about 10% of those gross profits and donating that in this quarter to Sportsman's Alliance. And uh, I think that that is a wonderful cause. So the, the goal is to generate some revenue for the platform that we split to send to conservation. Uh, and some of the, those conference, conservation dollars are going to be going towards different organizations that I'm passionate about. And if you guys have an organization that you're passionate about that I've never mentioned or, you know, whatnot you feel is important, let me know because I'll, I'll look it up and I'll consider it. It has to be an organization that actually spends their, uh, puts their money where their mouth is, so to speak, and gets those dollars to use for us hunters. So that's that's why for for in this quarter we're taking all those proceeds and that's that's going towards uh, Sportsman's Alliance. Um, also, if you buy the uh, "Don't Buck with Public Land" T-shirt on the website, that's going to be under the merchandise tab. Uh, that as well has a 10% donation towards um, uh, the, the, again this quarter Sportsman's Alliance or, or whatever organization we're working on. Point being, this is not some temporary thing. When you go to thewesternhuntsman.com and use our gear shop, that is going to get you gear and you're going to be helping conservation. I think that that is a wonderful combination. So, uh, guys, if you're uh, if you're in the mood and in the market, check it out at thewesternhuntsman.com. I, I appreciate that. Guys, with that, let's get after it. We got Logan, we got Guy, and we got Garrett. And this is a great conversation. You guys will get a lot out of it. Let me know what you think of Jim at thewesternhuntsman.com. And here we go. Let's roll. good i think we're good can you guys see the the little record button started there yeah and yep. got it. everybody can hear me all right 
Yeah. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. What's everybody drinking, by the way? <laughs> I saw Modelo. Logan. Modelo. Yeah. Is that Garrett? Nope, that's uh, that's Logan. Uh, my buddy left him in the fridge, so fair game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, I have a lot of people have a 24 hour rule. I have like a 24 minute rule. If they leave them in there for 24 minutes. Oh, as soon open. as that contact's made, like as soon as the hands off the the whatever it is, it's <laughs> yeah. you know you just transmitted ownership. As soon as you put it in my fridge, it's now it's now yeah, so it's officially <laughs> yours. <laughs> it's ours. You know, I'm not stingy. I'll share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll uh, I, yeah. I've had these white claws. I think I was telling you guys last time we were on. I've had these damn white claws in my fridge for months because I don't drink those things. I bought them for my buddy, and he hadn't been over since. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I yeah, tell you yeah. what, if you Tell ever <laughs> you ever give me guff about being a California again, I'm gonna just bring up that damn white claw. Uh, well, gonna, that's what I was thinking. Point. I could just send him to California and you're gonna lose him. all your Idahoan stature there, buddy. <laughs> oh, white claw. claw. <laughs> white claw. And it's like peach fuzzy navel or some shit. I don't know. You got, oh, your, man. You got <laughs> your Ugg boots on right now too, huh? No, man, but I am wearing I in in recognition of my California friend here, uh, I'm wearing flip flops tonight. But they're not Birkenstocks, <laughs> but I am wearing flip flops because it's like 73 degrees. That's all right. You can wear flip flops and drink White Claw. You'll fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, what are you drinking down there? Oh, I'm, that's me with the Modelo, sir. Okay. Oh, that. Jeez, man, I, I even clarified and I still forgot. Too many white claws. <laughs> Too many white claws. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You guys are just nothing but trouble tonight, I can already tell. All right, guys, on the line tonight, uh, this is going to be the non-resident hunt panel. And the idea with this conversation is we're going to get uh, these guys that are super seasoned and experienced about or, or in terms of hunting out west and, and going to different states and being non-residents and all these different areas. And for any of you haters out there, that think that this is a problematic discussion, just sit down because and just be quiet because this conversation is important. We're all non-residents in 49 other states, and uh, we all like to do it. And I think that one of the, the challenges with it is kind of the mental hurdle that comes out of the thought of traveling to other states and, and being a non-resident hunter, whether we're talking scouting or planning or, or the costs. And, and that's all the stuff that we're going to try to alleviate in terms of what many of you worry about when we're talking about non-residents and, uh, and, and as long as you're not coming to Idaho as a non-resident, uh, we're good to go. Right. <laughs> so on the line, I've got uh, from Ohio, Logan Erdman. He is uh, a huge like fan of, of coming out West. He's, he comes out West for mule deer and elk. And what else do you come out West for Logan? Um, that's it so far. No wolves um, yet. No. Well, I always get a, I always get a wolf tag when I'm in Idaho. Um, I've been to Texas that. twice this year for, for hogs. So I go south also. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like to, to bow hunt, really. But uh, thanks for having me. It's great to be back on, Jim. Hey, I appreciate you coming on. And, and that's a good point. J- just, to, just so everybody knows, everybody that's on the panel tonight has been on the Western Huntsman in the past. Uh, and I'm just going to go kind of in, um, clockwise here. Yeah, over in what did I call it last time, Garrett? The sunny city of uh, Roseburg, where, Oregon, or something like that. Roseburg, Oregon. Um, <laughs> we've got Garrett Weaver of the On Point Podcast joining us. Uh, say hello, Garrett. How's it going, everybody? And then down below, from the rainy, foggy, uh, bad weather <laughs> state of liberal infested California. Oh, who said that? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> the what the guy drinking white claws and flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not drinking white claws. I got just so the audience knows, I'm drinking straight whiskey here. Oh, we'll tell them Ooh, straight. Hmm. I, I just got to sip it, or I don't. I don't want to fall out of the chair here while we're. Dude, I it. almost made me a mixed drink before this thing. I'm like, no, I don't want to be that guy. No, out, Garrett, I'm, I'm, you should have been that guy, man. Uh, last time, <laughs> last time, I was a little tipsy when we when we got done recording. So, Heck yeah, yeah, I was drinking too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so guy, uh, say your last name, guy. Duplanche. Du Duplanche. Um, guy is the host of the Western Contours podcast. And uh, we have had a couple of different times we've gotten together and recorded and, and uh, you know, talk conning and Birkenstocks and all sorts of stuff in the past. So we always a good time with you, guy. I appreciate you guys all coming on. 
Yeah, thank you, brother. I'm glad to sit down again. So the, the nice thing with you guys all being on the show at, at some point in the past is we don't need to go through these long intros and backgrounds and stuff like that. So hopefully everybody's familiar with everybody. And I want to dive right into this topic. And I, I want to start this like with a kind of a round of um, bird's eye, you know, 30,000 foot view of your thoughts on traveling to other states to hunt and like why you kind of not necessarily advocate for it, but why you would, if somebody asks, asked you if it's a great idea or a bad idea or whatever, why you would tell them, you know, it's, it's a great time and here's why. Uh, let's start with Garrett on this. Can you give us kind of a, like a justification? Why, why do you like to travel out of state to hunt? <laughs> That's easy, man. Uh, Oregon sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, unless you love, unless you like predator hunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of getting that way in Idaho, man. Man, I'll tell you. Um, I I can tell you that I've hunted. Uh, I've now hunted um, the, one of the big three in Oregon. I've hunted uh, another very, very, very coveted tag uh, in Oregon for elk, and I've been on coveted deer tags for elk. And just the little, sorry, Idaho. The little pinprick of Idaho that I hunted was like an eight to twenty year tag for elk. Um, just general season. Oh, gotcha. So, uh, you guys got it way better than we do. Um, unless you're looking for a rosy, then you're out of luck in Idaho. But, um, yeah, dude, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Oregon's, Oregon's got some good opportunities. If you really do know where to look and what tags to put in for. But like I said, I mean, I put, I got an eight year, uh, preference point tag last year and I struggled hard. And um, when I went over to Idaho, just deer hunting, there was elk everywhere. I was like, what the heck? Like, and we saw plenty of deer. Uh, you, and mispronounced, you mispronounced Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got the Wyoming regs right in front of me, too, because I've been looking at Wyoming. And, and um, I think next year will be the year I pull the trigger on it. But I'm just Sweet. building points in Wyoming right now. But um, yeah, me too. yeah, I mean, Oregon, Oregon's, if, if you, I'm serious, if you like to predator hunt, Oregon is a fantastic state. And I would beg you to come over here and help kill some of our predators. So, Are, are you talking like bear, mountain lion, wolves? Get, what, what, um, what do you mean? Bears and mountain lion, um, wolves, um, probably you're going to be, uh, you know, who knows when they'll be legal to hunt here. Um, the feds just gave the, basically, I, I just got an email for the wolf update, um, which I subscribed to in Oregon that um, I think, Trump actually did something with the feds to where they had to give control to the wolf management to Oregon. Yeah, uh, to he, he, he de delisted him. One of us kind of uh, right before he left office there. Yeah, yeah one of his parting gifts to the uh, to the left. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, you know, I mean, that's a great step, you know, in us being able to do what we want to do. But Oregon is extreme. You know, Oregon's like. Oregon, Washington, man, they're like a little brother and sister to California. I mean, we, we, whatever they do, we follow suit very quickly. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, who knows if we'll ever be able to hunt them, but, uh, we do have a lot of bears and we have a lot of cougars, um, uh, probably actually double the, uh, population, um, uh, goal of cougars in Oregon. We have, I believe over 7,000 cougars, uh, for sure over 6,000, but, um, back when I was a kid growing up, Man. going all the, all, to all the ODF and W meetings, the management goal was like 3,200. So, yeah. um, which should not have changed. So we have close to double or over double the amount of cougars that we need. Can you guys hound hunt cougars in no, Oregon? Back in 94, it was, uh, back in 94 was a horrible year for hunters across the United States, especially Oregon. We lost the, uh, right. It was a hound hunting ban. Um, so now we have to pay, you know, government agent agents to go out and hound hunt. So doesn't that make sense? So instead yeah. of generating revenue by selling mountain lion hound hunting tags, uh, the state takes taxpayer dollars to pay professional hunters to go in um, at, a, at a great cost. And the management goals are still not being met. Early not even close. And, and yeah. then also on top of that, now how deep you want to get into this. Now we have quotas per area. So like, for example, if we kill, let's say 200 cougars, it's not, this isn't the number of 200 cougars in, Douglas County, then that's, that's it. That's it for Douglas County. We can't kill any more there, even though we have way too many. It's just really silly. It's just really yeah. silly. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's tough, but you know, guys are out there actually starting to become, so there's a few handful of guys become quite successful at calling in cougars, hunting mm -hmm. them in the winter, just literally walking them down without hounds, just walking them down. And, um, you know, kudos to those guys. Those guys are savages that are doing yeah. that, but 
Yeah, yeah that's sure. why I started hunting out of state, man. I just so, started getting tired of, uh, of, of Oregon's lack of opportunity and quality. Gotcha. Well, and that's a that's a pretty easy justification. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you you just want more opportunity outside of Oregon, and that's why. And what all states have you hunted? Um, I've hunted Alabama and California, and uh, not a state, Africa. Uh, I've been out way out of state, and then um, yeah. I've you know those are the only states I've hunted. Or in Idaho, excuse me, and Idaho, in Idaho. Yep. Um, and I've got Hawaii and Alaska and Wyoming in my crosshairs right now. Um, so yeah, Sweet. yeah, I'm, I'm definitely broadening, broadening out, but access deer is on my list. Uh, Alaska, like everybody is on my list and then, yeah, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Nice. All right, Logan, let's go to you. Why, why do you travel out of state? Why would you recommend somebody else does it? Um, not to, uh, copy Garrett's answer, but, uh, <laughs> kind of same reason, uh, Ohio kind of sucks. Um, I, there's. Except that giant buck you got this last year. I mean, I wouldn't be. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, there can be some good whitetail hunting, mm-hmm. but literally I shot that thing in somebody's backyard. Like, yeah. you know, uh, it's on a residential management program with the police department. So it's like, I was a city deer, you know, and that's, I, I don't know. Um, but more than just me not liking Ohio, um, like that allure of adventure, uh, is really like, uh, I don't know. That's it, what draws me to the West anyway. Um, and more opportunity to fill in a freezer, um, different meats. You know, I can only eat so much deer, uh, wild, wild hog, wild pigs. If you guys haven't had wild pigs, um, oh, there's yeah. a pile of them to kill and they are the most fun thing to hunt with a bow. I think, you know, cause the opportunities there, um, there's usually like not much of a bag limit. You can just, you know, empty your quiver out or yeah, I, I don't know. And I, I love pork chops. So, um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of reasons that I would recommend, like go to Texas, get your bow and just go get you a pile of pork chops because you will have a blast, uh, bring a bunch of friends with you, the camaraderie. Um, it can be a trip of a lifetime. Um, yeah. And- some, some of my best friends, that's, that's all we talk about. Like, man, you remember that time shit face drunk in, in Texas, like playing cards. And it's just like, yes, like I'll, I'll take that to the grave with me. So, <laughs> you know, what, what does, is a, what does a non-resident tag to hunt hogs in, in Texas cost? Um, you just buy a license and it's, it's, uh, I don't know. It's very affordable. Is it? Um, okay. Okay. If there's so much private land down there. So you might have like 350 bucks into a hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, like my buddy has a, a ranch down there cause everything's fenced in. And, uh, if you want to go down that rabbit hole of high fence versus whatever, like you go hunt my buddy's ranch. That's got fences. Like everything's fenced. Every, like if you don't want your neighbor, neighbor's cattle in your backyard, you have to put a fence up. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's Bummer. not to keep stuff in it's to keep other stuff out basically and you know i mean there's holes under these fences where the hogs are just and they're super destructive um like it looks like he was rototilling his pasture and it's just hogs out there at night like i witnessed them tilling up his fields at night so you go down over the bow inside that fence and you you tell me if you can kill a pig i'll shake your hand if you come out of there uh (laughs) you know with it with a pig without killing it at night i mean um they're, they're just so much fun to hunt. You know? Logan, so, I distinctly remember asking you if, if you decided to go to Texas to hunt hogs this last winter to hit me up because I, I wanted to go with you. And you, you totally blew me off. My heart's been broken. Well, uh, we can always go again, man. Um, that's uh, we, we had full house each time. He, he likes to keep it low key. But um, yeah, whenever yeah. you're ready to go, man, let me know and I'll set it up. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I, uh, that'd be a I ball. love it down there. Yeah, that'd um, be a ball. What all states have you hunted, Logan? Oh, um, well, I've hunted Maine for black bear, um, killed a bear in Quebec, uh, obviously hunted Ohio, um, Tennessee, Texas, Colorado, and Idaho. Did you, didn't you hunt the, uh, that eastern range in Montana? Or is that something no, you were just, you were working on? I was, I'm just, uh, just looking, looking just around. points no. and stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Um, but, um, same thing, my, uh, Montana's my crosshairs and Wyoming as well. Um, you boys better get basically on anything 
Mm-hmm. Anything I can shoot with the bow, I'm looking at, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, and and like I said, you came you came to Idaho uh, basically up in my neck of the woods last year and, and got that big bowl um, simultaneously while I was being unsuccessful on a uh, little south of you. So it was, it was pretty cool watching that I'll come be, together I'll for you. I'll be back this year because uh, I managed to get a tag. Did you? So, yeah. I was yeah, wondering. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering. They sold out quick. And, and uh, I just got a, from a, on a personal note, Logan is a custom knife maker and, and uh, he's the only one that I like because most of the custom <laughs> knife makers like send me message after message after message about wanting to buy their knives. And they're usually from like Nigeria or some that's, shit. No, that's the Pakistani Damascus, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Damascus. <laughs> well, yeah, you should have more knives to your collection. <laughs> <laughs> and and Logan, Logan makes these these badass yeah. knives, and my wife like rants and raves about the knife that you sent me to all her friends and family. She's like, "Oh no, come here, check this, check this knife out. Jim's got a podcast, so he got a knife." And, and she just goes on and on. She'll like demonstrate it like she's doing an infomercial on uh, cutting a tomato or something. It's, it's pretty cool, man. So I appreciate that. Yeah, I, awesome. I want to throw that out there. But uh, let's move on to Guy. Guy, uh, where all have you hunted and why do you advocate for it? Out of state. Uh, Texas, Colorado, Wyoming, Colorado again, and uh, Arizona. Um, man, I have to, right? If I want to chase the... Mighty whoppity, dude. I, I got to get out of California. Um, you know, yeah. we have all three species. Uh, one of them is endemic to California, and that's the tool elk. Um, but it's a once in a lifetime unless you're going to go blow, you know, 15, 16 points on a cow tag, which isn't happening. Um, I've been a max point holder in California for two years now i probably got uh-huh. another four to five to go and you know if i want to chase elk man i gotta get the hell out of california um you know we have great opportunities on on just about everything else um you know logan's talking about pig i mean i you know in my opinion we we have uh we're probably number two in terms of you know pig hunting um in the states we have great blacktail hunts and uh mule deer have been on the uptick uh, in the last few years, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah man, to chase elk, I gotta, I gotta bounce out of state, man. Are you, are you doing spring bear down there in California? That is that another effing California joke, buddy? <laughs> no, no, I was, I was just curious after, after maybe you no. had, you, you like probably went and played golf with Senator Weiner in. Uh, San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I was just for, that, he asked, legitimate question. I he asked for his white claws there. out of your fridge there. Yeah. No, dude, there's no, <laughs> uh, no, I'm we have no spring bear claws. season. What's uh, that? You, I'll send that shit right back to you. I said, we have no spring bear season. We only have fall bear. Oh, uh, that's right. Never, I knew that. Yeah. We never, we never make our quota. Uh, but yet they won't extend that season or give us a second season on them, you know, just because it's the beautiful state of, uh, Peter Republic, um, that, that carries more weight than science and data from, uh, Department of Fish and Game, man. So, yeah. Do you, do you, being in your shoes guy down there, I mean, you're like this, um, uh, you know, well-known Western hunter that lives in California and, and, uh, got this great podcast and and it's like you know it's it's a huge focal point of your life hunting do do you get nervous about the future of california and being a resident there and 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 kind of meshing that with your your hunting lifestyle honestly i get nervous looking at any place right now in terms of the future of hunting and what we're up against um good point i i've never i've never felt like it was something that I was going to have to fight for, for, for us, for our generation, you know, and we, and we say that quite often, right. We want to preserve this for future generations. Um, and this is the first time in, in my hunting career in my life that I felt like we're, we got to fight for it right now, man. Um, I think it's at risk across the board. If you look at everything that we were, that we've seen since, you know, January one this year, uh, the onslaught, has been uh has been phenomenal man it's like blitzkrieg from them God, man, it's been crazy it's been yeah. just like at, and not just california i mean it's just been everywhere you know yeah. trapping bands in new mexico 
um, you know, the reducing resident or non-resident tags in Montana for, for the outfitters. And I mean, I can just go on and on and on. Um, it, it's, it's been a wild winter, man. I feel like maybe the politicians, uh, had too much COVID-19 and got bored or something and came up with all this bullshit. But well, I, I think that the folks that are proponents to ban what, you know, our lifestyle and, 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 you know, take away hunting, they knew what they were getting when this, you know, when this gentleman loosely um, was, you know, so-called elected to office, they knew, you know, this was the time to attack it full board and go after it and see what'll stick. And that's exactly mm-hmm. what they're doing. I'm trying to yeah. wave down, man. Death yeah. by a thousand cuts. Yeah, for sure. I feel for you, man. And uh, I, I agree with, with the sentiment of that uh, we all as hunters, you know, whether you're on this hunting panel or you're somebody listening to this show, uh, it doesn't matter. We all do need to be awake. And, and, and I don't mean woke. I mean, you, you need to be awake <laughs> to the, uh, the current situation and, uh, and just, just understand that, that hunting the way as we know it, hunting as we know it is under attack. It's, it, there, there are threats from multiple different fronts against organizations that are well-funded and well-organized and well-united. And, uh, you know, we can go down that hole all, and we usually do on this show every time. So I'll try to keep us off that. Let's, let's get back to the non-resident topic, I guess, huh? Cause I'll go, I'll go off on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's almost important. If, if you think about it, Jim, it's almost important to that conversation, right? Because a lot of why we fall victim, if you will, to, those onslaughts is because we're so divided as a demographic, you know, Hey, I, you were just talking the same mess, right? Stay out of Idaho, go to Wyoming, whatever. Yeah. We, we say that as, you know, as, as fun banter, but there's some truth to that, man. And people um, get, but people get vicious with that. I mean, I say it jokingly and, right. and you know, because, but people get, they take that to like the next level. And what they don't understand is in a hunting organizations, they pick up on that. They know. So they exploit one of those sides or one of the other sides. It's, and that's what we have to pay attention to. It's not like, you know, we're, we're all just holding hands like, like, like a bunch of these anti hunting organizations and say, singing the same kumbaya song around the fire. We all have these, these major divisions that are, and I think Garrett and I talked about this on, on the last, mm-hmm. uh, last time we, we were on and, and he made a really good point. Um, Garrett, where like, if you think about it, if you were an anti hunter personally, you, you'd have a pretty good strategy to go about this. And that is exploit yeah. the divisions amongst mm-hmm. hunters. What do you guys think? They're, they're yeah. doing it. Look at the trapping, look at the trapping bands, right? Mm-hmm. And, and as sportsmen, as sportsmen, we should be getting behind the trappers again, a death by a thousand cuts. If they can affect the trapping, that's just a, 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 a rung in the ladder, so to speak. So yeah. it's not, they, they're doing exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. So true. And, and you guys, you guys in Oregon, Garrett, you guys deal with a lot of that too. Cause uh, as much as I give guy a hard time about California, the, the stuff's in all the Western States. This stuff is all in the Western States for sure. Yeah. I mean, they, they came out, they've come after Oregon before. And, and like I said, 94, they, they succeeded. Um, they took the biggest, best tool away from us in order to manage our, our predator populations. And mm-hmm. if you see the charts, when that, happened and then what happened to the deer and elk populations after that it's it's not coincidence yeah super interesting logan i a a question because you're kind of in that that midwest you know over in ohio uh i don't is that considered midwest i don't even know um that that's what they call it i don't call it that i think it's more east you know when i think midwest i think like iowa you know yeah me too yeah because when i was in I, i had to go to cleveland for this work thing for like three weeks one time and i rented a car and went fishing in new york uh, upstate New York. So I, I, I feel like it's more Eastern, but I don't know how people living there uh, kind of, yeah, you know, compartmentalize that. But the, the question I have for you is what is it like there in terms of culturally uh, pro hunting, anti hunting, anti hunting movements and organizations and legislation? Is there, is there like kind of a take or a feel you get from, from being in the Midwest or, or whatever we want to classify it as? Um. No, you know, people are pretty tolerant. Um, as long as you're respectful, <laughs> you know, um, people are pretty tolerant. Um, a lot of people think it's cool. Like, uh, you get seen with a, a buck in the bed of your truck, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of people are going to be asking questions, like not necessarily they hunt themselves, but they're like curious, you know, they want to see that thing like, whoa, like 
you shot that thing they've never seen a buck that big and it'd be like a little mm-hmm. basket rack eight pointer you know and they're like what like <laughs> that thing lives around here like they think it's some kind of mythical beast you know and it's um at least from my experience around um yeah. the only I, I guess the the only pushback or like problems you have are with other hunters you know like people oh set his blind up on my property line like 10 Mm. yards away from me you know and it's like i I don't i don't understand the division in the the community amongst ourselves you know yeah Um, for sure i was just talking to somebody about a a unit in arizona to deer hunt and the guy was straight up like yeah some of them locals will pop every one of your fucking tires and i was like what you know, like, yeah, that, that actually happened to me, man. And so I live in Idaho, but, um, I, I have a company truck that has Washington plates cause Spokane's, you know, 30 minutes, <laughs> 40 minutes for me. And somebody popped one of my tires wow. and, and they slashed it one time. So now if, if, uh, I don't take my company truck hunting very often, just in case my boss is listening. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> when I do, I, I actually, you know how the, the, I've got a shell on the back of the pickup and, you know, the canopy cover thing and it's got that back window and it gets all dusty when you're cruising down the dirt roads. I write Idaho. I'm a resident. Yeah, I write <laughs> Idahoan on it. So, so nobody pops my tires because that was a real pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's what they were telling me. I was like, like, what do you mean they will slash your tires? And they were like, yeah, those, those locals don't, you know, they don't take lightly to, non-locals or non-residents up in their deer hunting areas and uh, they'll leave you stranded and i was just like that is absurd like you well, know let's, same let's, team talk about same team man like let's kick this conversation off about non-resident hunting um on that topic because that is an issue and i've experienced it i'm sure you guys have experienced it um, anybody that's on social media sees it. I, I, I don't know how many times I've had to, I, I've rolled my eyes over some of the comments about how non-residents are taking over their spot or non-residents are doing this. Non-residents are the reason why we have global warming. Yeah. You know, whatever. Uh, I, I've heard it all and I, I'm sympathetic to it to an extent because there, there can be, and it's like that, you know, that, um, in, in school, they talk about the confirmation bias where you're, you're really keyed into there's a truck in my spot that has an out of state tag. And so therefore non residents are destroying the entire unit that I've been hunting for three decades. <laughs> and, and, you know what I mean? And, and so yep. I think that it, it gets, it becomes this thing in people's mind that, um, because the reality is, uh, and I, and I might get just absolutely verbally assaulted over this, but, the reality is, is non-resident hunters are the least of our problems in Idaho, for the most part. Um, we have had issues where, you know, certain units get overcrowded and the fishing game actually redid that. And, uh, you know, right or wrong, the reality is, is if you take the state of Idaho, for example, and I'm using Idaho, by the way. I, I, so I've hunted Idaho, Washington, Montana, Utah, Nevada, Arizona and North Carolina. And, and so those are the, those are the states. That, so I, I say that to impress upon the audience that we, all of us on this hunt panel, we've been non-residents somewhere and, and we've, we've all done this. We, we've gone, we've gone out of state and we've traveled. So we all, we all have a, you know, a lot to offer on this topic, I, I suppose. But getting back to this, do you guys have any uh, bad experiences personally uh, going to a different state as a non-resident that you could, you could share on the show? And whoever wants to kick that off. I don't have any personally. No, I always get the looks right. You go anywhere with a California plate um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and folks are kind of like eyeballing you. Um, hey, you're going to have... get in trouble, guy. I have an extra Idaho plate I could send you, man. Oh, that would get me in more trouble, right? They run that plate and <laughs> they're going to throw you in jail. California criminal, let's, let's really get them now. It must be stolen. The sheriff will call me. Do you know a guy named Guy from Western yeah. Country? No, I don't know that guy. I don't he, catch you, he catch you on one of them White Claws and have me in jail. Out. He probably has a trunk full of White Claw. You better. You know. <laughs> no, um, I almost got my ass beat by a dude dressed like a girl. <laughs> now, are you sure? Are you sure you want to admit that? Um, oh, um, no. Dude, this dude was shredded up. Okay. <laughs> he was wearing the shortest short skirt I have ever seen. Is it and like I was that? I trying dude? to tell my buddy. 
Dude, go ahead. Go we ahead. We were headed to Colorado to Elkhart, and I'm trying to tell my buddy, like, yo, check, like, I'm pumping gas, and he's across the pump, and I'm, like, doing a head nod, like, look, look over there, and my buddy's oblivious, you know? Mm-hmm. And that dude straight up was like, you got a problem, bro? And I was like, nope, nope, I don't have a problem, you know? And uh, he was intimidating. Dressed like mm-hmm. a girl or not, he was intimidating. But uh, that's but, about the closest. But it wasn't like you, you didn't almost get – you didn't almost get your your ass whipped by a Sheila because you were a non-resident. It was because he thought you were giving them. Oh the, no! The evil just because I was trying to <laughs> tell my buddy to to look at what was going on over there. Uh, yeah, my fault. You know, I'll take all of the blame for that. You're but, gonna uh, get canceled, dude. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. He was he was intimidating. What do you have? Props to him, you know. I wasn't about to fight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Who want to get their ass? You couldn't even take the chance on that, dude. dude I would have run. Stopped, been, your ego would have never lived. That. Exactly. No, <laughs> I no, think, my I luck. Think man, somebody, somebody would have gotten that on camera of of Jim Huntsman getting his ass whipped by a dude in a skirt, <laughs> and uh, it would have been on on Facebook and stuff. So I would have just run. What about you, Gary? I think that dude lost a bet because he was not happy. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I've never had any issues that I haven't had in Oregon, um, you know, with other hunters being douchebags, but that's about it. Um, I've never had, uh, anybody call me out for having the wrong license plate or anything. So, yeah, um, that's good. but I, you know, I, I know that, um, there's plenty of stories out there where, you know, Corey Jacobson was hunting Oregon and somebody said, go back to. They saw his license plate left a message on his windshield saying yeah. go back to where you came from. Oh, yeah. Back. I heard about that. Yeah. This is for yeah, residents I mean, only. Not, those guys are out there, man. And those yeah. guys are probably, you know, not very successful hunters. And they're looking for any excuse or any edge that they can get. And if that's scaring off, you know, I'm not ever going to blame unless you literally walk in on a bull and you're like, hey, what's up, dude? I'm going to crash your party. Um, you know, I'm not going to blame somebody for me not being successful, you know, like, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't, my mind doesn't work like that. So, um, I have had plenty of opportunities that have been busted by other guys directly or indirectly on purpose. Yes. Um, both, but, um, if you're, if you're writing that message on somebody else's windshield or you're, you're, you're popping valve stems, which is around here's what guys would do, um, or they'll slash your tires. Um, or they'll just pull your truck off the freaking road with the with, with a winch so they can get around you. Um, you know that's happened a few times. Um, but if you're if you're that guy, then you probably need some soul searching. I'm like, why am I doing this? Is it because I'm a, such a crappy hunter that I need to do this? Like I I just don't even understand where that where that thought process comes from. But I think that has more to say about them than it does about the out of stater. Yeah, that's a great point, man. And I think I think one thing that comes out of one thing that I've noticed with with the whole thing that I, I want people to understand that it doesn't matter if you're hunting in state or if you're hunting out of state as a non-resident, there is going to be a certain uh, percentage of people that are just assholes for the sake of being assholes, whether they were hunters or not. They're just assholes, right? That, that, there's no getting around that. But the, to your point that you were making, um, I think that it's also – you know, hunting is a very emotional thing. It's a, it's a, it's an attachment to like our soul and we, we want to get out there. We want the success, you know, it's been compounded by social media and the stress of, uh, you know, having to not, not having something to post to get a bunch of likes and, and getting caught up in all of that. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's something highly emotional about hunting. And, and I think that like when, when somebody's not successful, instead of taking, the time to, to kind of look in the mirror and, and say, okay, why didn't I notch a tag this year? Did I not go far enough? Did I not plan well enough? Did I not scout well enough? Did I, did I do this? Did I do that? No, instead, it's a lot easier to sit there and be like, okay, I didn't get an elk because the wolves were everywhere. The wolves are blood spur, you know, they're bloodthirsty. They're, they're killing everything in sight. They're spitting ass dead carcasses everywhere, right? And and I'm not saying that there is not a problem with wolves in the state of Idaho. I'm a huge proponent for, for reducing wolf numbers, but I don't use it as an excuse because I know when a wolf is in the area and I move to the next drainage. Same thing with non-residents. Because non-residents might be in your area, 
with the exception. Now, again, I have to I always have to throw out a disclaimer that there are particular units in every Western state that have a higher ratio of non-residents that come in. And it's it's a little bit uh, they, they, they do get overrun. And, and I, I will be the first to admit that. But as a resident, you should have the opportunity to choose other units because you should know where those units are that get overrun by non-residents. So that's kind of your fault. And so I, I'm just saying this from from the perspective of I know it's emotional. I, I know that this is this is a big deal to us. Hunting season comes around, you know, depending on, on the species once a year. And and it's a you know, we build it up in our mind all year. And when you don't tag out, it's, it's super easy and very tempting to start pointing your finger at non-residents that people that you think because you are a resident, you have some kind of ownership over, you know, a piece of public land or something. Um, and and I, I've, I've been guilty of that as well. But I want, I, I'm hoping that somebody out there listening to this will, will kind of take this message and really think about, am I using non-residents and all the other excuses out there in the world as an excuse as to why I didn't tag out? Or did I really screw up? Did I do something? Did I not prep enough? Did I, was I not in good enough shape to get up that mountain? Jim, um, Randy Newberg actually talked about that with Corey Jacobson, um, an Elk Talk <laughs> podcast. I believe it's episode 62, Crowding Residents and Non-Residents. And um, he breaks down the Montana situation mathematically with like last year we had X amount of New residents move to the state, Mm -hmm. and if 10% of those new residents are hunters, which I'm sure more than 10% of those are hunters, then you're going to have X amount of new applications. He relates it to to point creep and the amount of trail heads being crowded. Like it's just just go listen to that that episode if you think that okay everything that you just said. Uh, you know, uh, I've been wondering, uh, he backs I've, it up mathematically. Wondering, where, you can't argue with the math. Where the hell has Randy Newberg been, man? I haven't seen some of his mm-hmm. podcast getting released lately. I gotta, I gotta hit him up here. But you know, on a on a side, total side note here, I just figured out why. So I'm sitting here, we're recording, and I'm like, I'm sweating like a one legged IHOP waitress, and I, I'm like, why in the <laughs> hell am I sweating like? That? And my freaking heater is on full blast behind me. Let me turn this off. Mm-hmm. Gosh, it's like 75 degrees today, and I've got the heater on full blast. Okay. Hey, Jim. Hey, yeah. Jim. So you said something in there, man, and I and I have to say something about it, right? You said you were talking about outside pressures uh, and, and, you know, wanting to post something on social media. If mm-hmm. that's the reason that you're in the woods um, chasing whatever it is, you're in the woods for the wrong flipping reason, man. <laughs> oh, right? yeah, if you're, true, if man. you're looking, <laughs> if you're looking for that validation from social flipping media, you, you've got it. You've got it effed up. You've let's, got your priorities. Not even, yeah. They're, yeah. Let's not even pull punches on that BS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a great point guy. Yeah. The, totally. Um, I just, <laughs> it all boils down to the basic premise that as hunters, we all, we all got to remember this is, this is like the, the thing that I always try to say, we've all got the same end game and goal in mind. We want full freezers. We want the wild adventure and, and we want those memories. Um, and, and those are the same goals. Every hunter has them uh, with the exception of some of the, the folks that, uh, you know, are, are just this, this, you know, like the hedge fund managers that go shoot something as a trophy for their office. That, that differs. I get that. But the, the, the most common hunter, the, the folks like us, we all have the same goal and objective. And so I, I think everybody, I wish we could all calm down. Oh, <laughs> you know, I know that's a, that's a tall order. So I, uh, I emptied out my napkin <sighs> bottle for two guys packing out a bunch of bear meat on uh, just miles deep in a trailhead in Colorado. Uh, it was like midnight. You think yeah. they cared right then and there what state I was from? No, <laughs> they were like, just thankful for the help, right? Right. You know, uh, couple mornings previous to that they might have been bitching about me parked there like uh ohio plates huh <laughs> but you, ne- you never know who might be helping you out so okay so that all same team exactly you know? exactly and we, we guys we could go on for two hours on this particular sub- subject but um I, and i could i i love i love talking this but guy you and i see a, a lot uh eye to eye in terms of of that topic so we can just keep going i'm pulling my notes back up here you you just said something, Logan. Um, seeing your Ohio plates, 
And that leads me to the question, when you guys go out of state, with the exception of you, Garrett, when you went to like Africa and you're going, planning on going to Hawaii and stuff, do you guys recommend driving or flying? Who wants to start with that? Uh, I drive everywhere. I'm a driver. I'm okay. a flyer. <laughs> Garrett, you're a flyer. I like time machines. That's what an airplane is to me as a time machine. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the pros and cons. I, I'm a driver as well. Um, only just because I, I, I think we even talked about this, Garrett. I, I have a thing for being on the road. I like, I like being on the road yeah. and seeing everything on the road. Uh, but man, it does suck up a lot of time. So let's, let's start with you, Garrett. Kind of talk about why you fly and what some of the logistics are with that. So, um, you know, d- d- I'm going to throw this out here. I drive to Idaho where when it makes sense. And if I was going to go to Wyoming and stuff, it would depend on who I'm hunting with. Um, if there's any way for me to get out of driving, I'm getting out of driving and I'm flying, um, period. But mm-hmm. so when I went to Alabama, Brian picked me up, didn't need a truck. Went to Idaho, I had to drive and it didn't make sense to buy a plane ticket and rent a truck and take it off road. And, you know, just logistically, you're going to need to know how bad the roads are, where you're going, time of year, how much is the cost? Does it actually make sense to fly? How much is it going to cost to get the meat back? And versus all that huge giant headache, driving is way easier. I mean, it is. It's time consuming, but it is much, 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 much. Just logistically, right? Like, yeah. like you just said, you know, getting the meat back. That's that's a huge uh, logistical challenge. Yeah, honestly, I've never even had to. <laughs> I say this, I've never had to worry about it because the the animals, um, the the deer that I shot in Alabama were donated, um, uh-huh. and so I didn't have anything to take back there. And then Idaho, I basically ate, ate my tag both times I went. And so, but I would have just put that in a cooler and drove back. And when you go to like Hawaii, you have to, you can get totes, styrofoam totes or coolers and you have to ship it back as baggage and stuff. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, there, there's ways to do it, but um, if you're looking to make it the easiest on yourself, just do, just drive. I mean, that's the best, that's honestly the best way. Uh, but if I'm hunting really out of state, I'm probably having a buddy that either lives there. Now that I have a buddy that lives in Texas, I have, um, you know, you, if I wanted to go fly over and meet you somewhere near an airport, I could do that now, you know, Mm -hmm. like, um, or, or if I wanted to go meet guy somewhere in California, I maybe I could fly down there. It's cheaper and shit to fly, you know, to some of these places. And it would make more sense for me to do that. Um, I, I literally hate driving. I do it all the time for my job. Um, you know, a lot of days it's four hours plus in, in, in my seat driving, um, which compared to other guys, I know is less, but, um, for me, I really do not like driving. I really don't. And so, yeah, um, it, it's just a, it's just a personal preference, man. Totally, totally personal preference. What about you, guy? Uh, man, I I like to drive. I'm I'm sort of like you. I like that window time, and I do a bit more than Garrett uh, road miles a day. <laughs> and, it's, and it's southern Southern California traffic. But you know, for me, I don't I don't want to run the risk. You know, you you send your bow or your rifle through you know check, and you get you land, and then that bow or rifle is not there with you. Your hunt's mm-hmm. ruined until it gets there. Um, but I really, you know, for me, I, I really like the freedom and the flexibility, right? If we're getting our butts stomped and I want to extend that hunt, um, I can extend that hunt and then time off of work. Um, I, I've made that a non-issue for me uh, in September. So what do you um, mean by that guy? What, what, what do you do for a day job? I'm a heavy civil superintendent, so I do uh, heavy civil construction, man. Gotcha. So, so like area big highways areas and bridges and stuff. Yeah, highways, bridges, airfields, yeah. damn stuff. Sweet. Uh, and I've committed to myself to work as little as possible in September and, uh, you know, chase the passion. And we're in control of that destiny. Um, and I don't want to use somebody else's saying, but we only have so many Septembers. That's true as hell, especially when you hit that 40 plus mark. So shut yeah, up, that's where guy. I'm, at, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, it's the truth, right? We're in control of that. We can choose to do it or we could choose not to do it. So I'm choosing to do it. And, you know, I, I save all the days I can um, for September, man. You know what? My wife and I, are, um, we, we don't watch a lot of TV, but sometimes we do get into like an, a, a show and we're watching this show. Have you guys ever seen The Americans? Uh, on, on Netflix, like the Russian spies that are living in DC. No, anybody? Well, okay, it's it's pretty good. Well, we just started it, but 
you know what's scary about it? So it's based in like 1981. I'm like a toddler in 1981. And the, the main characters are, are around the age I am now. And I was, I was sitting there watching. I, I looked at my wife and I'm like, you know what? Like if, that, if these were real people in 1981, 1982, 1980, um, they would be like 80 years old today. My wife's like, stop. Because they're, they're our age, right? You know, so I think about that stuff all the time. Uh, I, I probably, I'm probably weird, man. I think about stupid shit like that. But um, Logan, what about you, man? T- give us uh, your take on driving. Uh, similar, similar to a guy. Uh, I'm a driver. Uh, it's nostalgic, you know. Mm-hmm. You get your, you know, your hot and buddy, whether it's your wife or your your buddies, and. Uh, you know, you hit the road, you, you've been packing, you know, you got your mixtape and a case of beer and some Marlboro Reds. Jeez, man, you know, in, maybe in Ohio, they don't, you know, you guys don't have like digital downloads or what? what's going on? No, I mean, I'm just saying it's mixed a, a nostalgia, you know, you just, you're packed up with your boys, you're ready to rock, you hit the open road and then it's like cornfield, yeah. cornfield, 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 mm-hmm. cornfield, you know, it kind of sucks when you're, when you're doing it, but uh uh, I don't know. I can stop and piss or sleep when I want to. Uh, it's more of that allure of adventure, like I was talking about earlier. Like, you never know what side road you're going to end up going down. You never know. You might get your ass beat by uh, some dude dressed like a girl. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's fun, yeah. man. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> some of my some of my favorite memories. Uh, dodging, like Bruce dodging. Jenner of South Dakota about beat your ass. Like, dude, getting, getting run off the road by semis. Like I seen a four by eight sheet of plywood on my way to Texas, about 30 foot in the air. It blew off of somebody's trailer. I mean, pretty dangerous, pretty awesome. Like, uh, <laughs> super dangerous. my wife I and I had, a, had a wolf, horse, right? <laughs> my, my wife and I had a wolf come out and just stare at us somewhere in Montana, right in the middle of the road. It was chasing a mule deer buck. Uh, I mean, and these are things wow. like I'll remember for the rest of my life. And it's just, I carry this mentality. Like I work all year. I was disciplined enough. Uh, as soon as I get my truck, pack all my stuff and start driving, that's a successful year to me. It yeah. doesn't matter if I eat my tag or not. Like I got my tag, all my bills are paid. All my anxiety is at rest because I was disciplined all year and I'm finally doing it. That's like it. that's a success for me. Yeah. Uh, great point, man. You know, and I, I can go anywhere. Like I was saying, uh, you know, I take all of September off. Like that is my, that is my huge thing is time off. Um, I worked really hard to become like a master fabricator and probably one of the best welders in my area, not to be, you know, cocky or anything but that's like my demand like uh, that was why i changed jobs is uh, my old job was bitching about too much time off to hunt and this place bitched less and paid more so you, you know money talk i can't beat that deal man no. no so i got all of september off basically whenever i want off to hunt um not paid time off but time off which i'll take it you yeah know? yeah for sure um yeah. so i just love to hit the to hit the road and just go places man like uh but drove up through Canada. I saw some awesome stuff. Like just, it's not just, you know, putting a buck on the wall or, you know, an elk in the freezer. It's everything. It's the whole process. The whole package. Like, yeah. I am, I, every day I'm, I'm either shooting my bow or studying up on gear or e-scouting or, you know, working on my truck, like maintenance. It's all a part of the, the lifestyle. It's not just, it's to me anyway, it's not just about like, likes like like we were talking about earlier like oh i'm gonna go out and backcountry hunt for instagram like to hell with that like (laughs) this is my lifestyle man like mule deer big high country mule deer like i eat sleep and breathe mule deer big elk like not even big elk any elk man any (laughs) mule deer any mountain like i want to go see it i want to feel like i'm the first person that's ever been up here and which i I know is bullshit you know i think you were talking about that the other other day jim oh yeah i talk about that all the time back back country basins you're just like damn like imagine being a native in here you know i I don't know like i just uh, that it's my whole lifestyle, you know, yeah. I've structured my whole life around hunting. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's all, that's all what you were saying. Part of the package, you know, this is a package deal when it, when it is as, when hunting is as important as, as it is to the guys on this panel, 
Um, you nailed it, dude. I mean, this is not like a, you know, we wake up to hunting in October for a week and then we shut it back down and kind of put it to bed. You know, it's, it's always there. Um, oh, and that, that's the kind of hunter that you are like, uh, hell, like we go out to my granddad's place in PA for rifle season every year. But other than that, like we don't really, you know, we're not mm-hmm. biology nerds, <laughs> like, you know, nerding out on whitetail behavior or anything like that. That's fine. You know, we're all the same team, like we were talking about earlier. And I have like, that's, that's fine. If you're just a, a one weaker. Yeah, you know, no, totally. I'm, the main I'm, thing is we stick together and we have respect, you know, like I'm not better than you because I'm a backcountry hunter. You know, I don't think you're less than me because you're just a, a weekend warrior or whatever, whatever the case may be. The, exactly. To me, we, we need to stick together. I mean, yeah. shit, that's, that's really what we all are as weekend warriors, unless, you know, you're getting paid to pursue it. Um, 98, True. 99% of us are weekend warriors, you know, and some of us just plan for a longer weekend all year. <laughs> <laughs> September is my weekend, brother. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pardon the interruption, but we got to talk about the show sponsors because they're the ones that make this show possible. I want to start with Scree Gear. Scree is extreme mountain gear. It's high performance hunting attire and gear, scientifically tested camo patterns, and all backed by a great company. And I wouldn't recommend it to you if I didn't fully believe in it. I've I've run the Scree for a couple of seasons now, and I tell you what. If you want to compare the the quality and the durability and the effectiveness of this gear, go for it because you're going to find that you're not going to drop a fortune and you're still getting all the benefits of what you can see out there with in terms of high-end gear. They offer a complete layering system for all terrains, for all conditions. It's gear designed to adapt to the weather. It's rugged. It's backed by a lifetime guarantee uh, and warranty. And what I really like about it is the VIP sizing and exchange program. So basically, if you order the hard scrabble pants and you get them and they, they show up and they're not fitting right, you just send them right back for free because they send you the return slip label that you just throw on your packaging and send it back. It doesn't cost you anything, and they replace it with a better size for you. So Scree Gear, check them out. And don't forget, at the checkout, use promo code the Western Huntsman for 15% off and free shipping. Heck of a deal. Great company. Great gear. All right. Moving on to Tacticam. Guys, Tacticam is our newest sponsor, and I'm really excited about having them on board. If you've ever wanted to film your hunts and have specific and unique, like, point of view type kind of angles, the Tacticam is the way to go. It can connect to your bow. It can connect to your rifle. They've got the film through scope. Uh, make sure you're checking regulations on all of that and because that changes in every state. But I film in Idaho when I'm hunting, and I have the Tacticam attached both to a head harness and a shoulder harness, as well as like this flex mount thing, so I can I can get multiple angles as I'm calling in a screaming bull elk and get it all on camera. The gear is great, and they also have other cool packages like the Reveal Game Camera. It's a cell cam, so you can set that up if you're managing whitetail property or something like that. It's perfect because it texts you in real time when pictures are coming in. The other thing that I really like from Tacticam is their new fisheye camera. For you fishermen out there, when you're trying to get that uh, that that perfect coverage of, of filming your fishing trip, man, this thing is badass. It like it gets the whole wide angle of it, and you can control all of these cameras through an app on your phone in real time. Zoom in, hit record, zoom out, pause it, stop it, all the things right there in your app in real time. Great sound quality, 4K video recording. Get you a Tacticam. And I heard a rumor that we're going to have one hell of a giveaway coming up on the show for some Tacticam gear. So stay tuned for that. Go to Tacticam.com and check it out. Last, but certainly not least, I want to talk about Hoffman Boots. Hoffman Boots are high-quality, high-end, great traction, rugged mountain boots that you need. Every hunter needs a good set of boots. And you could really drop a fortune on great boots. But the Hoffmans are going to give you everything that you can get, just like what what I was talking about with Scree Gear, without breaking the bank. That's what I love about the Hoffmans. If there's one thing you don't want to chintz out on, it's great quality hunting boots. You've seen them. They've been up there hunting. People that chintz out on their hunting boots, and they're slipping and sliding all the way down the mountain. The sole's coming off. They've got everything. Their feet are soaked. 
All that is going to be prevented with a great pair of Hoffman's. I run the Hoffman 8-inch Explorers. It's a great boot, and I can personally vouch for that. But they've also got another great product called the Summit. Uh, and that's another popular boot out there. We've got the Explorers in insulated, non-insulated, six inch, eight inch, uh, and just check out Hoffman.com, and you can, or I'm sorry, Hoffmanboots.com, and uh, you will be able to kind of pick out all the all the different options and and things like that. They've got a great warranty, a great company. Jim Hoffman, the owner, is a great dude. Uh, and at checkout, don't forget to use promo code Huntsman10, all caps lock, for 10% off. Enjoy it. Let's get back to the show. Uh, can we talk about uh, – we, we talked uh, – Garrett was kind of talking about some of the logistics of flying and all, all that kind of stuff. What about with driving? How do you guys plan that? When you're going, you, you know, we're not talking about you're just going to your neighboring state or up the road or something. We're talking about multi-states. Uh, you guys are on the road. How do you plan that out? How do you try to keep the cost down in terms of – because I think I think you, Logan, where it's like, man, you're coming from Ohio on the road. How many hotel bills is that? How much gas is that? Um, how, how, many, how many times have you – did you have to stop at a restaurant and, or buy food or, you know, how do you work that out coming that far? Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Um, me, I don't know if I'm a good example of that because like, I, I'm like a freak. Um, last year when I drove to Colorado, I left at like five thirty Ohio time and Ohio time. I was in Colorado by midnight, not like Denver, but, um, like I'm pissing in bottles, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I only stopped How many speeding and, tickets did you get? Um, well, I got one in Arkansas last year and one in Montana last year, but I'm good this year. Sweet. Um, yeah, yeah, no, and speeding tickets, that's a real thing. Uh, you have to watch construction zones because, um, like that cop in Arkansas cut somebody off to write me a ticket. Because, yeah, I, that out of state thing, man, yeah. the cops will get you because they know they're, you're not going to show up in court. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and uh, that, so don't don't speed. But um, I'll live off a bag of beef jerky and piss in a bottle and only stop for gas and uh, sleep when I'm tired. Basically, uh, I pack I try to pack my cab with as much little things, you know, around that I can and that be able to fit my coolers in the cab and keep the bed wide open. And I just sleep in the bed. Um, I got a mm-hmm. cap on my truck. Um and I'll just sleep at a rest stop and just crawl in the bed of my truck. Um, I'm thinking about getting a van, like one of them high top vans, like a like a Sprinter van or something like that, and just kind of van life in it. Dude, have you ever priced one of those Sprinter vans out? Because you'll think um, again. Ford Ford makes an all wheel drive one. I've been looking at. Oh, and, gotcha. Uh, I'm not a big Ford guy, but I guess they're like anybody can work on them type deal. It's not like a Mercedes. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll see. I'm just looking into it because the van life would be sweet. You know, you could uh, you could get like one of those decked out things where you could put your coolers under and then have a bed to sleep on. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts. of. I love seeing when people kind of post that. Uh, I know we were we were ragging on social media, but sometimes it's kind of fun to see how people set up their rigs when they're traveling across state or, or when they're spending a lot of time on the road to hunt and fish and whatnot. Uh, guy, what about you? Uh, do you do you have a take on the on kind of lo- the logistics of driving and hotels and costs and fuel and restaurants and all that kind of stuff? So, for both Colorado and Wyoming, you're talking an 18, and then one's a 22 hour drive. Bro, I drive straight through. Um, I'll I'll stop to stretch the legs. Um, but you know, last year drove out with the buddies, and uh, it was you know 17 and a half hours, and um, they were there 10 days. I flew the wife into Montrose, drove down the mountain, picked her up, hunted for six days with her, drove home, dropped her off. The winds were really bad. I had, you know, contact on the mountain, stayed mm-hmm. home two days, and then I drove back. And each time that I made the drive, I drove straight through, man. Nice. Um, it, it, I, I can do about the 18 hour mark and I'm fine. And then after that 18 hour mark, I'm like, okay. Am I, am I going to keep driving or am I going to pull over, catch a couple hours of sleep on my way home last year? I think I slept for like 45 minutes. Um, you know, after driving it four or five times, I was feeling it. And then, you know, 23 days on the mountain, 
um, it, it beat me pretty good. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, in terms of the logistics, I, you know, I haven't got to the point where I can't drive it straight through. Um, you're so, yeah. ra- especially going right. You're so ramped up. And if you have somebody in, in the vehicle with you, man, the music's blaring, the, the windows are open. Um, you know, you're pounding whatever energy drink, uh, you want and and for me I'm packing Copenhagen left and right so <laughs> yeah, Copenhagen that'll, that'll do it man <laughs> so we're just rolling man it's like I got to piss real quick you jump off take a piss jump back in and go um and then yeah. I don't have well the you know the last few years I haven't had to worry about speeding tickets because I was driving my Jeep and them things don't <laughs> <laughs> it's hard it's hard getting out of state man because that speed limit kicks up to 75 80 miles an hour I'm pegged mm-hmm. at 76 knowing that the Jeep is doing 64 oh jeez so, yeah <laughs> that would drive me nuts man oh dude I I actually the re- I actually got I love my Jeep I got rid of my Jeep and bought a new truck just because I drive to my hunts and I was tired of those, you know, those longer miles because of it. Mm-hmm. So I it's actually some miles per uh, gallon on that thing. Oh, uh, I was actually doing pretty good. I was getting like uh, 15, 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I got a Tundra and that's about all I get. Uh, yeah. That's pretty it's good. It's about 30, 33 or 34 hour drive uh, from here to Idaho. And a round trip, it cost me about a thousand dollars. If that's, yeah, that's I just it. go to Idaho. Is that um, is that thousand dollars, Logan? Is that is that including your tag? That's gas, no, buddy. No, that's just fuel. Bro. You're just that's talking about fuel. fuel. Okay, I'm because yeah. I'm just trying to get an idea. Uh, you know, so the listeners understand. Um, so you're 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 dropping a grand in fuel, huh? Just fuel alone. Yeah. You know, plus or minus some beef jerky. God, you, got <laughs> a, you got like a heavy foot, man. How, I don't that that doesn't compute for me. It, oh, it's that tundra, man. Yeah, it's yeah. what you're driving. Big old V8. And, you know, once you once you get in the mountains and, uh, you know, driving around when you're getting there, you know, trailhead to trailhead or whatever the case may be, however your style of hunting, I just, I don't, I plan for, you know, $1,200 in fuel. And, you know, mm-hmm. if I come home with 100 in my pocket, I'm happy. You know, it's just traveling expenses. That extra can of Copenhagen or that extra <laughs> monster or Red Bull or whatever it is, you know, because you don't want to. You don't want to be stingy when you're out there. You want to be comfortable. So, yeah, so yeah, have a good time. Have a splurge. cushion. You know, you don't want to call mom like, "Hey, can you Venmo me a twenty spot for gas?" Because I, <laughs> you know, I'm broke. Dude, let me tell you, you guys. Okay, when I'm in the Marines, in I don't know if you guys know, in Georgia, they have like this mini uh, Mardi Gras thing in Savannah, Georgia. Me and some Marine buddies go there. I shouldn't even tell this story on the freaking podcast. <laughs> we go to Georgia. Uh, and start at this festival and there's just, you know, drinking everywhere. And we load up, I had a Ford Ranger with a, like an extended cab without seats on the back. And guess where we woke up? We, we wake up in Daytona beach, Florida. <laughs> and we, we didn't know we were there. We thought we were still in <clears throat> Savannah. And the only reason we knew is, is because there was, we were parked kind of by this beach parking area. And, uh, there's a billboard that says, you know, uh, Daytona beach favorite Denny's restaurant or something right here. And so we go to the Denny's restaurant and sure enough, we're in, we're in Daytona beach, Florida and we're all broke. And I, ha- I had to call my mom and I'm like, Hey, uh, you know, I'm like 20 years old, 21 years old, maybe. I'm like, Hey, uh, yeah. So we're sitting in a Denny's in Daytona beach, Florida. Not totally sure how we got here, but, uh, can you maybe Western union us some money? This is before Venmo and whatever. Um, you know, I might cut that story out. That's, that's a little extreme. What do you guys think? Oh man, see, that's uh traveling. That's nostalgic. You remember <laughs> that with your buddies for, for life, man. That's awesome. We were pretty, we were, we were a little out of control back then, but, um, Garrett, let, let's come, let's come to you. And I want, can you kind of explain your process when you get a tag out of state and you're planning on going, um, what's your planning and scouting method? How do you kind of determine where you're going and, and how you, how do you kind of take care of the, the scouting aspect of it? Walk us through that process. That's a good question. So um, I'm, I'm getting to the point now where I have enough friends in, in enough States that the ones that I want to hunt, or I have friends that have hunted those States. And it seems like OT or, uh, you know, other states, people are a little more loose lipped because they don't, you know, that's not like my spot. That's like I'm I'm with, with my really close friends. I'm I'm pretty open with where we went um, over to Idaho. And, you know, it was it was 
like I call it like the burnt mountain of Idaho is where we went. There's people everywhere. So it's like, it's mm-hmm. not a secret. So sure. um, I, I'll, I'll inquire with friends. And if I have like a gym over there in Idaho and I want to, I'm like, man, I'm looking over here. I'll, I'll call you or like, maybe I'll get a hold of Steve Speck or, you know, I'll get a hold of some of these guys that I know are, are good hunters. They're successful and they're going to lead me in the right direction. I'm not asking, um, I'm going to come to them. First of all, well, let me backtrack here real quick. I'm coming to them with questions on areas that I've scouted on Onyx and I'm, I'm doing the homework before I call them and then I'm having them either validate it or I'm having them say, yeah, I wouldn't do that. And that way you're not relying on them to provide you a spot or an opportunity and you feel like you earned that spot, right? Like um, if I'm just calling yeah, you like and that. saying, hey, man, I need a couple, I need a couple honey holes. Can you, I really need a kill bowl. Can you tell me where to go? Or how's that conversation to go saying, hey, I'm looking at this area over in the sawtooth unit, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm looking at camping here and hunting here. Um, what can you tell me? Do you know anything about that area? And then you can be like, oh, yeah, that that, that area freaking sucks. Don't go over there. Yeah. Just crashed it. You know, it, it has it's like the lalo. I mean, don't. Um, so that's that's where how, how I would start is I'd start on Onyx. I'm making phone calls to biologists. I talked to a biologist when I went over there for the first year. Um, and she spilled the beans, told me elevation, um, weather, um, if the weather does this, this is where they're going to be. Here's an area that I focus on. I told her how I wanted to hunt and get away from people. She gave me areas with gates that are walk-in only, um, cause Idaho has walk-in only. It has ATV friendly, horses friendly, all of the above. And I just wanted to go with my feet somewhere where I could get away from people. Yeah. And, um, uh, and she, she really gave me a general area, but I also came to her with a general area. And then out inside that general area, she gave me specifics. And then she also, you know, I was asking her um, feed and L- I asked her feed and, and, you know, how, how high are these elk and deer coming from if they get pushed from weather? So you have to ask good questions to get good answers. And you just can't expect them to, to spill the beans to you without having done a little bit of homework on yourself. And so, um, go hunt is fantastic. I like go hunt. I use it all the time, especially when I'm figuring out draw odds and you'll get guys on there that are, that are, it's like its own little community that actually does help each other out. Yeah. So they're not to go hunt. They're not at each other. So you, not, don't, you don't get on uh, Facebook and be like, Hey, not looking for your honey hole. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not one of those guys. And then, get, and then get torn up. <laughs> Uh, that, you know, yeah. that would be interesting to see Garrett do that. I, I wonder if there would <laughs> be a different response. Right? No, there, I, there would... know, I can tell you the answer, guy, because I, I did that um, for a local. Um, I did that in one of my local pages and um, kind of got the riot act. And it was like, you above anybody should freaking blah, 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 blah. I'm like, <laughs> how many of you douchebags have messaged me personally? Asking this and that, and I just said, you know what? And that was the last day I ever asked a question or helped any hardly helped anybody out on Facebook. I I hit it and quit it. That one, like I bet people would be willing. You know, I put my foot, best foot forward a few times, and I got hammered, man. I mean, I was. I mean, this was over probably two years ago, and I I have I am now. If you want to get a tip from me, you can listen to the podcast. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's Facebook, really about it. And Facebook a, is just a cesspool of negativity, man. I feel like we could, like, dude. we could design a, a drinking game where one of us, we go in and we post some question. And every time somebody responds in some kind of negative or aggressive way, we have to take a shot of tequila or something. You, you know, you'd be drunk oh, in you, oh, man, you, you'd be wait, you'd be on the floor, probably alcohol poisoning at that point. Yeah, yeah I was going to say you'd have poisoning. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, um, Onyx and Go Hunt for guys that are really serious, that's an investment. Go Hunt's not cheap, um, but what you a, you do get a lot of really good information. I mean, Go you Hunt's really do. Kind of- for I mean, yeah. it, what what's yeah, expensive, right? What what's <laughs> not cheap? Because that the that resource I find to be man, to me it's one of the best resources out there outside of having to search through 
Department yeah. of Fish and Wildlife in a particular state. Go Hunt does a phenomenal job as a resource, worth every penny, in my opinion. I think. It's, Man, I, yeah, I tell I you what. Know. Hopefully, yeah. you fellas. I agree. Hopefully, you fellas over at Go Hunt are listening to this. You can hit me up at Jim at the Western Huntsman dot com for sponsorship opportunities. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Garrett let yeah. it, and Guy said it. So we got two other podcasts. We yeah. got first. Yeah. Well, like well, I mentioned, it, it, it can kind of kill your dream. I uh, <laughs> I actually provided. Um, quite a few of the bear profiles for the Oregon. Um, so I, I um, tried weaseling my way in there uh, with those guys because I was providing the the bear hunting aspect of, of the Oregon, you know, um, units and stuff like that. And, you know, they, they, have, they have size, um, you know, everything, you know, look, you have guys that have hunted it, locals that are on there helping, you know, you know it's just a really, actually a really good community. And, out of all the hunting resources for out of state, that is probably, I would probably say the most useful and I've gotten the most from that. Okay. Um, Good that to know. One, that one website. Yeah. I mean, it, it is legit. And then um, Onyx is, is, or base map, whatever you use. I use Onyx. Um, that is, I don't know how you would do that. I mean, she, I don't know how, I don't, I don't I know, know how we used to go to Portland without an iPhone. We used to have like paper, magazines with maps I know. and like I don't know how we used to do that man I remember having to pull over and like open maps of of the city up to find the road I'm trying to look for and yeah yeah life yeah, is different yeah, man I I literally I, yeah. so I'm a base map guy and I I don't remember how how I hunted before base map and and it's just crazy <laughs> to think you know and it was only like I've only had that for like four years like what did I do before that? I never yeah, used well, GPS you come to Oregon? What's that? Yeah. If you I come to Oregon and hunt my neck of the woods, you, you're going to have it or you're going to get arrested. Mm. It's, it's just that simple. Yeah, because of, cause get, of the get, property line. All the all the timber owners, man. Yeah. They don't play games. You, you end up on Warehouser, that's a that's a $1,000 fine. And, yeah, they'll probably slap you with something else. But um, And none of these guys play games. You know, none, none of the timberland uh, owners play games. And they own, you know, probably 80% hmm. of, of the land around here. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, um, but yeah, so that's, that's mine is, is call the local biologists, um, after you, you've acquired the information that can lead you into having a good conversation. That's gotcha. you know, the number one thing I personally have never gone and actually scouted Idaho. I went over there and used all the information I got. Um, and then, um, I saved it all on, I, uh, on my Onyx maps. I saved it all offline. So even even the areas around where I wanted to go in case I wasn't finding gear and I wanted to explore farther around, mm-hmm. um, I would download those maps. And then I mean, people were really freaking friendly. Um, yeah. every, we hit it on a bad year and everybody told us not to judge it off that year because the deer hadn't been pushed down um, because the weather was so warm. I and mean, we're talking T-shirt, 70 degree weathers, uh, weather in, in October. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah, that's pretty rare for Idaho. Sure. Yeah. And, and we saw, you know, an average of 40 something deer a day and two or three bucks a day. And, you know, I just, I, I didn't drive 14 hours to shoot a dink, you know, so I, mm-hmm. I chose to eat my tag and I had plenty of opportunities to fill it. And my dad ended up shooting one of the bucks I passed up and, and couldn't have been happier. And yeah. so Hell yeah, man, man. it was a great hunt, beautiful area. And I'm, you know, I can't keep talking about Idaho. I'm sorry, Idaho residents. <laughs> yeah. You just keep mispronouncing Wyoming is all. I mean, we'll, We'll I, well, that's all. I, I've got the regs right in front of me. For, for, and <laughs> on, on what that about note, you guys? You know, both... oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Jim. No, go I ahead. Was I was say, just going to ask you. Garrett. So, yeah, what I was just going to comment to Garrett and Logan talking about, you know, Wyoming. So Wyoming's going after that ninety ten. So you guys better pull the trigger sooner than later, because if it goes to that ninety ten, it's going to be harder to get in there. It's going to cost you more money. Right now, it's eighty twenty. Going in on low points, you could get that special tag. It's spendy. But you have, you know, a good opportunity at the moment. But they pushed hard this year for that ninety ten man. Well, really? What do you, I what do you in think, some of the- guy? I've, I've got, I've got, I'll have three points in Wyoming this year. Um, like, yeah, what, what are my odds with, with so? I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's funny. I've, I have fly fished and, and all, well, all sorts of type of fishing all over Wyoming, and so I know Wyoming well, except for when it comes to the hunting and the the tags and stuff like that. Can, can I go, can I, can I reasonably and feasibly think to go to Wyoming on three points and, and uh, have a shot yes, at the belt? I, yes. For me, okay. Wyoming is a three point state. If you are willing to drop the money on a special tag, if you're not, then I'm going to say <clears throat> it's a five point state that you can get in on a regular tag. Now, okay. as we talk about out of state hunting, 
we have to look at what our expectation is in terms of well, the hold, cow ratio. Before, before we go there, like guy, I want to I want to circle back to that. But when you say uh, three points is going to be a special tag, you know, expense, and obviously once Go Hunt uh, sponsors my podcast, uh, that shouldn't be much of a problem. <laughs> But um, getting <laughs> you know, getting back to that, what what do you mean? Like, so is is Wyoming again? I I probably sound kind of dumb to a lot of the listeners out there, but I just haven't looked into Wyoming super deep yet. Um, so so, you, so go ahead, go ahead. Wyoming, sorry man, I I apologize. I didn't mean to cut you off. So with, with Wyoming, they do a special tag, and you have your regular oak tag. And what they did is they kind of separate the special tags from the regular draw, um, and it increases your odds uh, to get drawn. Okay. But you are paying double the price for the tag. So whereas, you know, a typical elk tag, regular elk tag, bull tag in Wyo is about 650 bucks, 670 bucks in there. You're going to pay literally double for the opportunity to apply with less points and go after that special. Tag. So like 13, 1400 so bucks. Yeah. I think all said and done when I hunted there in 2018 with the archery stamp, my license and everything, I was sitting right around 15, 25, 15, 25. Uh, on the special okay. tag. Yeah. I and think the, you know, I'll the sell plug. my kids swing set and stuff for that kind of, <laughs> there you go. but, the, but, the, but the nice thing about it, right. If so you go in September, right? And you hunt and say you strike out. Well, you can go in some of the late season units um, later in the year. I think it was. Yeah, I Dirk did that, like man. Almost February. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you if you miss it, you know, miss it in September, you can go back. And that was my intent. You know, when I was up there, I arrowed that bull. Um, bull went bye-bye. Never found bull. Found bull. Bull poached. <laughs> we won't go into that. Um, oh, geez. So I, my intent was to go back. And I just never, I never committed to make the drive back up there, right? It was just like, ah, oh, man, I, I blew it, um, and I wrote it off. But you know, I, I think three points. If you want to spend the money, if you, you know, if you budget for that, um, it to me, it's well worth that. Uh, okay. That. If they go ninety Good ten, know. Good to know. When they, yeah, when they oh. went eighty twenty, they raised the non resident price to compensate for less res- non-resident tags. So if they go 90-10, they're going to do that again. That increase is going to be substantial, um, mm. not just on the Man. special tag, but on <clears throat> the regular tag as well. And that's how they did it when they went to the 80-20 on them. So hmm. get in there while you can get in there. Okay. Sorry, well, I, I guess I better put there's, it in next year then. There's a few units that I was looking at that are mainly comprised ah. of wilderness. Um, yeah, but don't you have to have a resident in, hunter with you on on that wilderness? That weird rule. Yeah, oh, there's God. their wilderness law is stupid. But um, yeah. it was you were you were guaranteed to draw the tag on no no points. But it's mostly wilderness and it's infested with grizzly bears. Right. Um, so um, not to say that you can't go there and kill an elk. Um, and like the trophy potential was like 360 plus. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I haven't had boots on the ground, but that's, uh, I got a couple pins dropped on my Onyx that I would like to go visit um, before that all happens with Wyoming. Well, and that, that brings us to you, Logan. Uh, what, what is your process for planning and scouting a hunt? Do you have like, like a preparation to, to head out and head to stay? What, what do you got? What do you kind of do program wise? Um, I will just, like get an idea in my head of that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I'll either go scout it to confirm or try to network and talk to people that have been there. Um, That normally doesn't work out so well for me. Uh, So I basically just have to like, if I'm interested in an area or perhaps somebody dropped a hot tip, like, Oh, you know, go check out that unit or whatever. I'll, I'll, do a summer scouting trip or, you know, whenever I can fly out there. Like I'm actually, as soon as we're done with this podcast, I'm packing my bag. I'm flying out to Colorado tomorrow for the opening day of shed season. Uh, oh, you are? I need to pick up some knife handles. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I, it's like, uh, I take the wife out. We got all of our backpacking gear, uh, loaded up. We're going to go, um, fly out and see if we can't pick up some elk antlers or some mule deer antlers. Um, hmm. you know, do a little, nice. uh, just, just some backpacking, man. Like I said, I, I just love to get out there. I'll, if you can hunt it, 
uh, except for turkeys, really. I'm not a big turkey hunter, but if you can hunt it, uh, you got I'm against all about turkeys, it. You know? man. Let, let's talk about it. What, uh, it, just, it just doesn't do it for me, man. It just doesn't do it for How me. How many turkeys have you have you uh, killed? One. Oh, man. I was, gonna, I was hoping you were going to be like, no, I've never shot one. I, man, they're no, a ball, man. The bow. And, dude, I got decoys. I've got calls and stuff, and I've gone out, and I've tried, and uh, I've tried to make it interesting, like on public land around here, and I just, like, like adventure hunting, like canoeing into some Ohio backcountry oh, yeah, and man. getting on some birds and stuff and, like, calling from the canoe, and it just – and like, dude, we're getting responses and stuff. It just doesn't do it for me. I don't know what it is. I can't get into you gotta it. Gotta go so. spot and stalk on them bad boys. Now. Yeah. yeah, I and called. I, now, I had. I, you guys wouldn't believe it. I had the craziest morning. It was a week ago from today, actually, that we're recording. And you know, I was going in to these spots, these these big drainages up above my my place here up in the national forest, and I I'd, I'd start using my my hand call. And uh, I get these gobbles from all over the place, and I'd move down. I'd go in, you know, about a mile down into the drainage, and I'm calling them in. They're, you know, they're it's it's like a mini elk call in session, and you know, almost as exciting, but not quite because you know they they're not 700 pounds. Um, but they they kept busting me, and I'm like a mile from my truck. So I drive down the road. I walk 20 feet from my truck to uh, relieve myself after drinking coffee all morning. And uh, I'm I'm standing there peeing behind some brush, and I, I had the call in my mouth, and I'm like, bark, 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 bark. and this no shit, this gobbler comes just charging in at me. I blew his head off. It was a great time, and I'm like 20 <laughs> feet from the truck. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Do you do you turkey hunt out there, guy in California? Yeah, you know I haven't. Uh, it get it, man. The last few years it's gotten so crowded and crazy, man. That I started going the last weekend. Uh-huh. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll just, uh, crow call, locate some birds and I'll put a spot and stock on them, man. And I, I get a lot more pleasure out of that aspect of them than sitting under a damn tree. Yeah. Um, yeah. Scratching me too. Slate, man. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I much prefer to spot and stalk them, but it's been, it's just, so <laughs> I don't know. I love the call in though. I love the call in. It's, it's, if it's, if, it, if they're lit up, you know what I mean? Thank you. Um, yeah, but it's like anything, right? You you get that much pressure in the woods, man. They those birds will hold up, and they've been called in so many times, and it just uh, it it gets crazy, man. You hear Orange Army all the here. time. Yeah, and true. Really, just, what about you, Garrett? It's gotten so packed. Um, yeah, we live in like I guess the turkey hunt mecca. Um, uh, we <laughs> I just never took turkey hunting seriously because you just go shake a can of corn about any any road out here and get a gobble and. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Sure. I mean, we 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 I mean we had to shoot them with BB guns to get them out of the garden and out of the driveway because they're pooping all over the deck and everything when we're growing. I mean, just they never they never appealed to me um, mm-hmm. in the same way like shooting um, a robin. <laughs> yeah, you know, like <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know, but I I did I will say I did actually. It's okay. So here's. Turkey hunting in Oregon, and most of it's like I never did it on public because it's I'm never not in that, that into it. But I did a YouTube video because uh, I wanted to make an actual experience of it, and so I I got this turkey call, the one that with the little pen looking thing that you scratch against the plate. I don't know shit about turkey hunting, if you can't tell, and it's like a little scratch one, you know. Yeah. And uh, now that you say so, that, I'm drawing a blank on what that call is called. Slate. It's a, it's a slate, slate call. Like a slate call. Yeah. Slate okay. call. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I got it in the subscription box. I didn't actually pay for it, and and um and so I, me and my buddy go out there, and I'm like, I want to actually call one in and hunt one because I hear it's really fun. And so we're driving in and then there's this really nice Tom right in the middle of the gravel road. And, and, and he's like, you want to get out and shoot it? I'm like, no. I'm like, can we just wait for him to like walk off about 60 or 80 yards and then try and call him back in? And he's like, yeah. And so I got out, you know, basically tried to like, he spooked off and then I'm like, all right, so then now let's try and go hunt him. You know, like, you're having to make an effort to actually hunt these stupid things. And, and um, <laughs> so we, we uh, finally drove around the other end. He, he, didn't let us close the gap on him. I'm like, okay, so that's, that's realistic. And then I spotted this look like a giant over across the meadow. And I'm like, Oh, you know, that's a cool. And so we hauled butt around the meadow and then um, spot and stock. And then, you know, my buddy's scratching the, the call and, <laughs> and we don't know what the hell we're saying to the Turkey, you know, just like, you know, making hen sounds. And, yeah, and I, I have no idea what I'm saying to him either. 
Yeah, you know, we we actually had a, a call off in, in, in the YouTube video, like kind of like a who did it better. And my buddy Mitch, my hunt partner, is like making this really weird face as he's doing it, but he didn't really know he was making it. But it was like he was angry. It was really weird. So it was actually a really fun video. And but um, you know, I think I sounded better, but neither of us know what the hell we're doing. But I ended up killing this really cool Tom, and it was really fun. But you had to make it a hunt. I mean, you do, it, man. I, just, I don't know. Man. You do. Like, like I was. Yeah. Like, it's exactly like what you were saying. And we don't need to stay on this uh, this turkey hunting thing. But um, that, like, I have them all over my property. I, you know, I I can I can get up with a freaking wrist rocket and wipe out a turkey. Uh, but I <laughs> I drove I drove you know a few miles up the road into the national forest because I, I live right by the entry to the national forest and. Uh, I had a ball just, I was by myself and I'm calling in turkeys all over the place. And I kept blowing my, uh, my setup. Uh, you know, they'd see me peeking around the tree and take off and it was just, it was a lot of fun. So, you know, you did, like, like you said, you gotta, it's, you gotta make it into a fun hunt. And, and if you do, I, I think it's a lot of fun and, and you get a lot of value and, uh, kind of education out of it. Anyway, I don't mean to advocate for you negative on turkey hunting folks out there uh on the panel here um let's move back yeah. well, let's, well i'm gonna throw this out there you know the guys that compare it to elk hunting um <laughs> dynamics wise i understand what you're getting from but i i don't think i mean i've heard elk it's, hunting guys say it too, so i can't say that you've never hunted an elk but it's it is such a different league i have no yeah. idea those guys are smoking crack man like i don't I, know i agree guys. i've I, heard I, a lot of people and I, I, I said it to an extent, but but you got to listen carefully when I say it. It is not like hunting elk, but it's a smaller version when you call him one in and he keeps responding. And it's it's a yeah, it's a smaller level of excitement. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get to communicate with an animal. I mean, the the dynamics with with you know maybe you have like a bachelor. I don't know what do you you know you're not a herd bachelor flock. You know whatever the hell that is and. <laughs> Yeah, and, well, right, yeah, right before they shed their antlers, uh, they're a bachelor. Right, yeah, right, yeah. I mean, it's, and then, I mean, I, I, some turkey dude's going to get a hold of me. I'm like, dude, you're a freaking idiot. I'm like, well, come on to Oregon, <laughs> and I'll show you I'll show you what I mean, man. I yeah. Mean, it's, it's not a, it's, it's like trying – yeah, I don't know. Well, you can, you can go on. <laughs> no, no, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. I've, I've never been able to compare it to elk hunting, uh, but I, no. I can see how there is – this uh, it's like a it's like a warm up to elk hunting because you're calling in this screaming gobbler thing that is just pissed off, but and, and they yeah. they see a lot better than elk do, but they don't smell, so it's like this trade off, uh, and it's just not <laughs> not as exciting, obviously, not as exciting. Uh, really, it, when they gobble at you, it doesn't uh, rock your world like a bugle does. Um, no, but anyway. I did have fun shooting that Tom last year. I, I will. I did have fun doing it and I will do it again <laughs> this year, but I'm not, you know, that's after I kill a bear. Well, so. next time, next time we get on this, uh, this panel discussion, you guys are on here. I want some better attitudes about turkey hunting. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> <No disrespect. laughs> so I want to talk about, uh, the, when we're, I want to talk about hunting regs and keeping up with the different states that you guys hunt um, because that sometimes that's a lot to deal with, and, and I want to kind of navigate that for a minute. Are you guys good with that? Who, Garrett, let's, we were just talking. Why don't you kick us off with kind of keeping up on hunting regs, any, any lessons you've learned with that, um, um, things that, that people that have never left their home state to go hunt somewhere, anything that sticks out that you think they should know in regards to hunting regulations and laws and um, you know, stuff like that. Make sense? Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I'm happy to, to go over Oregon's and stuff. I know that's not exactly what you're looking for, but no, 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 no. Regs, I actually call, um, I call an office. I'll talk to people and I will order for free. I've never had to pay for a hunting reg. Yeah. They, any, any of them, they will send them to you for free in Idaho and in, in, in Wyoming. There you go. I've got off Idaho for a little bit. We'll send you, um, you know, Multiple. I mean, I'm holding up a, a, a small stack of hunt regs right here, man. They're I mean, online too. Aren't great they? resource. And, and um, yeah, I mean, I was just actually, um, as we're talking here, I was kind of going through the things looking for interesting hunts and stuff. And, you know, you, you need to know before you go, you got to do your research and there's plenty of podcasts. Uh, I'm sure we've all done them on um, certain states and how the regs work and all the changes. And that's the nice thing about podcasts is that you can get a state specific 
Um, you name your podcast. I'm sure everybody here has done their states or certain states on draw, you know, um, strategies and hunting strategies and, and all that stuff. You I know, mean, I, I, I never have had that. I've never had that discussion only because it's covered so heavily on other shows. So I, I just never have. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, I've done a couple of them and it, it really does help. But I mean, I'll listen to other guys podcasts on, on out of state strategies because I don't want to be an expert. I just want to know what I need to know in order to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to have to be that, that guy. I don't, you know, I don't need to be. And there's enough guys out there that can have that expertise and they share it on a podcast. And I just saved myself hours of becoming that, that guy. And, um, you know, just listen to some of these podcasts out there. Um, you know, I think born and raised has some really good episodes. The, um, uh, what's the one with the, uh, Corey Jacobson and, and, um, elk talk, uh, Randy elk talk. They yeah. have elk talk. If you're looking at going out of state for elk, that's probably one of the better ones. Yeah, it, it really is, man. Randy, yeah, Randy I mean, is an encyclopedia time. when it comes to draw, uh, draw odds and, and different tags and, um, and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, um, Oregon is, is a draw, you know, preference point state. Um, I wish we would go what to Idaho did. You know, they, they're like a raffle state, aren't they? Um, you don't build points. No, there's um, no, there's no point system in Idaho. Idaho. Yeah. I, I wish Oregon was like that. You know, any, any, any preferred point system is doomed to fail period. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no not bottlenecking that doesn't occur. It just it always will happen. I can't name a state or an instance that it has not happened or isn't happening. Oregon's in the same, same boat right now. We're going through giant, um, uh, reform on our, on our tags and, and draw and how we, you know, we just made Eastern Oregon deer draw for archery mm, and that sucks, that sucks and, man. Yeah. Cause Oregon's not good enough <laughs> to do that. And so, um, you know, and, and we're looking at doing something very similar for, for elk and we pushed it off one more year and now we're arguing the specifics on that. And, and, um, I can tell you right now, if you have points in Oregon, you probably should burn them, um, on, the best tag you can get. Don't keep holding on to it because the stuff that I've heard proposed um, and the stuff that I, I've heard, you know, could go through. I, I burnt my points last year for a reason. Hmm. What about so, you, Logan? Do you, do you have a take on like kind of keeping up on hunting rigs and how you navigate, you know, making sure you're, because the only reason I bring that up is because I, I made a mistake one time when I was hunting quail in Arizona. Um, I, I was, I was not wearing the proper, I didn't know you had to have all this orange on. Was it Arizona? Might've been right. I think it was Arizona. Uh, but they, it was somewhere, it was either Arizona or maybe it was Nevada. But anyway, I was, I was only quail hunting and I didn't have any orange on and, uh, I, I, I got a ticket and, and this was years ago. Uh, and so, I'm, I'm sensitive to that because I, I, you know, I obviously I purpose, I didn't purposely do that. I just, I just didn't know. And I didn't, I was too lazy to go in and check. And so I, I don't want anybody else to make that kind of mistake. Um, and I, I could be totally saying the state or uh, naming the state wrong because this was like over 20 years ago. So bear with me if I'm wrong on that, but that's what it was. <laughs> I was not wearing orange while hunting quail. Uh, and apparently for upland game, you had to have uh, at least an orange hat or whatever. So, that's that's the point of this question, Logan. Do you have do you have a take on that and how you kind of keep up uh, up to date on that? Yeah, um, when I'm planning on hunting somewhere, I always read the regs um, multiple times, and uh, I've even packed them in with me in the backcountry um, just to something to study at night when I get back to camp, or if I have a question, I can refer back to it because I don't have cell phone service mm -hmm. because. Uh, it will go from the highest of highs to not such a good time when, you know, I mean, I'll paint a picture like this, like you, you arrow a bull, you do your thing, you, you tag it, you wrap the tag around its antler, you're packing back to the truck, you get there and the game warden's like, son, why aren't that thing's beanbag still attached to its leg? And, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. That That's a big one, man. You know, that thing, and he, he writes you a ticket and you just went from, hell yeah, I just killed an elk to son of a bitch now i have to pay this ticket mm -hmm. and you, you know what i mean that's just yeah, not a good time take, you don't want to take your meat and everything yeah, so, sometimes for something like that uh, well i you know and the, the game warden don't mess around so mm -hmm. it's your responsibility to know and you know like last year i went from colorado directly to idaho 
and they have different laws. Like, totally. Uh, you know, so I can't, you know, I don't want to be <laughs> caught like that because they don't care. They're like, well, it's your responsibility to know. So if you have, you know, any, and- you know bring the regs with you in your backpack and like, okay, here's how, you know, the state requires this as you're breaking down the animal, you know, yeah. and you have your buddy read it out, you know, or you read it before you break down or do whatever you have to do. But it's your responsibility to know exactly what you have to do legally. For sure. Um, and that's an important point, Logan, that, that you made. It, it is not the game warden's responsibility to educate you, even though they, they will. But that's not their responsibility. Their responsibility is to enforce what the laws and regulations are. So uh, great point, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just, uh, do what you have to do. You know, some people are, uh, different learners, you know, some people, mm-hmm. if you got to screenshot it on your phone, so you have it to refer back to, um, because there are no excuses. The game warden don't care for sure. You know? Yeah. Any excuse they can to, to get some money, they're broke, you know, so they, they need some, some, some of that money. So. <laughs> Guy, what about you? You got some uh, guidance you can offer? Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, if you're planning this hunt and you, you know, you know where you're applying a draw, uh, kind of the same as Logan, man, get into those regs and and make sure that you are well versed in the regs in that state. Um, you know, naivety or ignorance uh, doesn't negate you from being held to the standard of the law. Yeah, uh, and and just like Logan said, right, it can go from you know high as high to the lowest low. You know, dealing with it, you don't want to lose that animal. Um, but yeah, I just, for me, it's just getting in the regs. And if, you know, last two years I was in Colorado, I did not leave it to chance that I was familiar with the regs. I got in the regs again, you know, it, those laws change, uh, we're seeing, you know, uh, impacts and changes across the West and, and every year, man, it's, it's refreshed those, uh, even in your home state. Right. And that's yeah. where I think people will get slipped up is they take it for granted. Hey, I've been hunting here 20 years. Uh, and, and something changes and, you know, the game warden says, Hey man, what about this? And you're like, well, what are you talking about? You know, I've done this for the last 20 years. Sorry. You know, this law went into effect January 1st of this year. And then you're in a, in a situation, uh, yeah. where, you know, and if you lose your license now with the States that, you know, they're interconnected with fish and game, um, you lose privileges in one state, man. It's, I believe, man, I think it's pushing 30 some odd States, maybe 40 now that are that are interconnected Mm -hmm. and uh, you'll feel that effect across, uh, Mm -hmm. across the West, especially. Yeah. It used to be, it used to be like you could, you could lose your hunting privileges in say Utah and just be like, well, screw it, man, I'm moving to Colorado and then you're good to go. Well, that's, that's not the case anymore. Um, That's how I ended up in Idaho and on the run as a hunting fugitive. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Hanging out with the fluties too much. Too too many fluties, man. (laughs) He's a bad influence, dude. Okay, so, no, this is great stuff, guys. One of the things that I think is really important, and we kind of touched on it in the beginning, as as, uh, when when we're talking on the issue of non-resident hunters, I think the thing that prevents a lot of hunters from considering it is is there's this stigma of, like, it's this big hurdle. And, Guy, I want to start – let's start with you on this – getting over the stigma of going to another state and, and hunting, because I think a lot of people build it up in their mind. Well, it's going to be really expensive. I don't know the area. I don't know the regs. I don't maybe have the right gear. I don't know how to get the deer meat back or the elk meat back or whatever, whatever game animal you're pursuing hogs in Texas, you know, whatever. Um, and, and we're, we're looking at this and it's just like this big mountain to climb and you feel like you're climbing it blindfolded. And I want to, I, I not, that I'm trying to, I, this episode is not about promoting non-resident hunting or traveling to other states to hunt, but it's about reducing the stress that those that choose to do that, because it's a good thing. You you get amazing experience out of going out of your comfort zone and hunting in a different area, uh, specifically out of state. Like it, it, it's a, it seems crazy, but it is totally different hunting mule deer or elk in Idaho than it is in Utah. Uh, Not to say that elk are different in terms of their behavior or how they vocalize or anything like that. It's the terrain and the, and the, just the, the nuances of the, the environment and the habitat you're hunting in. And I, I recommend that to people to experience something different. If you've been hunting the same mountain 
for the last 20 years, you've never left. Uh, you're you're going to be surprised at what you pick up on in terms of, of uh, knowledge on on your game species of choice and bring it back home. So it's it's a it's a great place to be. So oh, that was a long way for me to get to, guy. Uh, you kick us off with this one. How do you get over the stigma? <laughs> you quit laughing at me. I'll, I'll come down there with my white claw. Um, how do you get over? How do you get over the stigma of of this this hurdle that is out of state hunting that, you know, not to say it was really good to start with me, but man, I had opportunity for years to go out of state and hunt elk. And I always just applied here, you know, uh, time off. And for me, it was a lot of, you know, be away from the family. My kids were, you know, fall athletes, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the problem with that is now in hindsight, I live in a world of regret that I didn't take those opportunities. Um, and it's just like anything else, right? If you have this idea, this dream, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, uh, in any facet of life, especially hunting, in my opinion, um, mm-hmm. is chase it, right? Is go after it because all you're going to do is sit back on the rocking chair and wonder what if, um, mm-hmm. and it's, it's really not a difficult undertaking, right? And I, and I've had people make comments or ask, you know, man, how, you know, oh, that's, you're, you're lucky to be able to, you know, do that. Well, Yes and no, right? There's some luck involved with it, I guess, right? You could look at it like that. But you're you're planning for this, right? You're you're making a commitment to do something that you're passionate about. You just got to go do the damn thing. And if 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 that's what's stopping you, then you need to take a look at, you know, do you really want to do it or you, you don't really want to do it? Um, you know, you hear so, people talk about the finance part of it or the time off of work. And if it's not an every year thing, make it a two year thing, make it a three year thing, but you just got to go after it or, or it's never going to happen. Okay. So prior to you ever going out of state to hunt in another state, is there, was there a perception that you had on, on whatever that you were dead wrong about you? Once you did it, you were like, Oh man, I built this up in my mind and that is just not how it is mm-hmm. kind of thing. Is there something along those lines that you have? Not, no, not so much for, like I said, for me, it was more so, you know, my kids were young. They were fall athletes. I was very committed to that. I coached, helped coach, whatever it was. Um, it, it, for me, it was more of my family. Um, and I, I just had a, maybe a guilt thing. Um, because let's, you know, let's face it. When I go on a two week, three week elk hunt, it's, there's some selfishness that has to be for sure man that. and that takes a toll you on the family I mean? when you have young kids for sure yeah yeah so for me it wasn't it, it wasn't a fear of doing something less a lack of commitment because of a commitment i guess you felt that. like maybe yeah. maybe you were negating your responsibilities uh to go on on, on like an out-of-state hunt is that is that kind of what you're yeah. implying gotcha yeah it was just you know and it's a means thing right a lot of mm-hmm. guys are looking at you know tight pennies uh and it costs some money you know logan both logan and i chimed in on you know a thousand dollar gas um it, man i have a, a three-quarter cheap- ton freaking chevy suburban <laughs> that I pull a trailer with and, and I like, I go, I'll go like 700 miles with this bad boy. And I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm just not budgeting or tracking not, the, the number, logging. man. I must not be logging it because I don't, I don't feel like I spent a thousand bucks for something like that. And this suburban no, no, uh, drinks gas, like, you know, freaking Doug Flutie's mom drinks liquor, but, um, okay. <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> don't focus on the number. Uh, half of a thousand is 500. So get a reliable buddy and make the plan and split. There it you go. Great I mean, point. 500 is obtainable. So Logan, you know, quit buying, quit buying bullshit Red Bulls every morning for the whole year. <laughs> and there's your gas money. No, so that's it's so just true. a discipline. That's so that's true, all. man. Um, and, and it, it is minor adjustments and, and I've talked about this before, but it's minor adjustments that go a long way, uh, throughout the year. You can't, you always, every, I think a lot of people look at it like this. Well, you know, a thousand dollars in gas is more than my weekly paycheck. Or you could look at it like a thousand dollars of gas could be paid for by spending three months packing a lunch to work versus going out. Make sense? Right. Boom. Okay. Logan, let's, let's go to you with that question. Um, Let's, let's talk about uh, getting over that stigma 
Um, anything you learned the first time you did it that you maybe uh, over had over, uh, how do you say that, over worried about in your mind? I, I know I'm missing a really cool word there. Um, in my, oh, I no, I got you, man. I got you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, somebody gave me the advice. Uh, they said, son, the first truck stop you stop at, the first lot lizard you see, buy her shoes. And I was like, what? And he said, time to your bumper. <laughs> and I, I didn't understand, but uh, I did it. I got me some lucky horseshoes and uh, I've been smooth sailing ever since. So <laughs> no, um, it's, it's, uh, it's just like, I don't know. You stand next to a pool and you feel the water and it's kind of cold. It makes you not want to go in. Or you just say hell with it and you just jump in. It's not as bad. So just if you're disciplined enough to, you know, allocate the finances where they need to be and get the tag and you've done all your research, just go out there and do it. What's the worst that happens? You spend seven or eight days or five, six days with no shower and then you come home with no meat and stories and memories that are going to last a lifetime. And you're either going to find out that you're going to want to do it again and you're going to be disciplined enough to to do it again and plan and build on that experience. Or you're going to be like, you know, those were I'm glad I went and did it. But once once is enough for me, hell with it. So uh, just uh, if you're thinking about it, if there's any inkling that you might want to experience something like that, like a Western hunt or not even just a Western hunt. Come out, come out my way, deer hunt. Go to Canada, bear hunt, you know, go go hunt. Go hunt White Claw in California. Yeah, go on some white claws in California. If we have any just, stock you know, left. If, <laughs> if you want to do it, then just just go do it. Find a way, you know. And uh, it's just discipline. That's all, you okay. know. And making making sacrifices like uh, quit drinking monster, like you said. Quit going out for lunch with your buddies and and just put that money in your pocket for for elk season or deer season yep. or bear season or a pig a pig hunt, you know. And and get get your buddies together and and you know. I mean, there's four seats in a truck. You split it four ways. And, uh, uh, I mean, you got to have reliable buddies. That's a whole different podcast right there, you know. But uh, <laughs> I've thought about that exact um, topic, man. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. That's why I like to I like to go by myself, you know, that way. Uh, that's, that's a whole other topic. But, yeah. I mean, it, it can be done with just a little bit of, you know, some solid friends and some discipline. You can you can do unbelievable hunting adventures or anything adventures, you know, know, I'm Um, going to say something there, Logan, that that you just mentioned. And, you know, Guy and I were kind of referencing maybe sometimes the guilt or the responsibility uh, of leaving your family for that long on a, on a hunt and the expense that comes with that. Um, This is for people that, that, you know, who you're talking, you know, who I'm talking about and you're related to me in some way. But when you spend $150 on freaking tennis shoes for your goddamn four-year-old that are going to be wore out in 30 <laughs> days and then bitch at me about how much money you have, like, come on. That how much – when you guys – when I'm looking at that, you really got to look at this from an overall big picture perspective. Kids grow out of shit in 30 days or, or 60 days or 90 days. There's like this 30, 60, 90. And I'm, t- I'm talking to you new dads out there that don't know this, that maybe don't know this yet. But when you're a new dad, your kids do not need $100 tennis shoes. They don't need $100 jeans until they get into their middle school years, you know, maybe early preteens, teenager, when style and fashion comes in, then you can maybe, you're going to be older and making more money. You can maybe justify it. But when you're young, 20 something, and you've got new kids, quit freaking spending all that damn money on on, on what they're wearing because a four-year-old doesn't give a shit about fashion. Okay, rant over. <laughs> or, you know, pick up some side jobs. There's a lot of work out there. Um, yeah. I was just doing some side jobs. And uh, I was working, you know, a 10-hour shift. And then I went and put in eight hours after work for a few days. And uh, I, I just bought some Swaros with that money. So Sweet, I'm pretty man. excited about that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mule deer, look out because I'm going to find you now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But there's just plenty of work. I mean, if you got skills, whatever it is, you do drywall and pick up a side job. It's just, dis- it's just discipline. Are you going to go home? Are you going to go home and drink beer and bitch about not having any money? Or are you going to allocate a day a week, mm-hmm. a couple, you know, a couple weekends over the summer, make a couple you know, hundred extra thousand, whatever it is. And, uh, 
chase your dreams. Love this topic. If there's a will, there's a way. I love this topic. You know, there's a will, there's a way. For sure. For sure. You so. know, or as Jim, as Jim and Garrett can contest, you can start a podcast because we make a buttload of money <laughs> pay for our hunting. Put <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> me on, you God, might lose the secrets. I don't know. God, man, we're, that's what the kind secret of money sauce, are right, you boys? About? I, <laughs> like this thing, my wife's starting to give me the, the the third degree. This thing better start making some money at some point. So I, I just I just <laughs> sent her a text, let her know. That uh, Logan brought up Suaro, and we got Go Hunt. We're going to get these podcast sponsors <laughs> online. We're, we're, we're going to be good to go, mm-hmm. babe. Don't you worry about it. No. Um, uh, so, okay, thanks, Logan. Uh, let's let's go to let's go to Garrett on that one. Um, you guys got me like totally sidetracked there with the whole sponsorship crap. Never happens. <laughs> um, Garrett, let's talk about in in your mind getting over the stigma and and making it happen. Well, I, I just know that everybody I've talked to says, "I wish I, would, I wish I would have done it sooner. I wish I would have done it when I was in my twenties. Yeah. I wish I would have done it when I was in my thirties or, or whatever that is." I've I've hardly ever heard anybody ever say, "Damn, I wish I didn't go out of state." You know, like everybody's everybody's. It's like it's like you you know I think I was already mentioned, but like that mental block of, of I don't know why I just, I, I, I procrastinated for a freaking 10 years before I finally did it. I got tired of seeing guys kill all these giant freaking bucks who didn't know hardly shit about where they're going. And I'm like, man, like what? Like you're telling one sixties <laughs> when you go over, like what? Like you're lucky to see a one sixty in order. We don't have one sixties um, in Idaho, just so everybody knows. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you that, when when we first went over, um, you know, out of state or anywhere, just having somebody that was like, yeah, it's worth it and hearing it and then seeing the pics, you're only going to be able to see, you know, somebody else eat cake without you finally wanting to take a bite. And I don't know what is holding you back. I know for me, it was it was it was money and it was worried about like where to go. And you don't have those excuses because, you know. It was already talked about. You could. I know somebody that was just talking the other day about driving, um, delivering food for DoorDash, and they were making a thousand bucks a week. That's crazy. Wow. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. and that's not. That's, that's a not lot of hunting, like, dude. And that was only, um, she, you know, one girl. I think it was a girlfriend or a guy. I forget who I was even talking to. I have a horrible memory. But this chick was making ninety bucks in um, every two hours, mm-hmm. um, one night. She made ninety bucks just doing it for an hour or two. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like. That's really good money. That goes and, a long um, way, huh? Yeah, I mean, you can even you can even. There's another app. I, I forgot what it was called, but I met a dude. Um, I uh, actually uh, my my brother's um, friend who uh, they met on a bighorn sheep hunt. They both grew the tag, um, and he's pretty successful. And even for fun, he lives up in Washington for fun. He has this app that allows you to you know connect into like Safeway, and people order groceries, and then you take it to them. And you make like really good money. So like when he's at Safeway, he'll look if anybody has any orders because he's already at Safeway and he'll drive maybe 15 minutes out of his way. and He'll make 20 bucks. Like, oh, that's fantastic. It's, he was already shopping. So um, me and my wife don't pay for cable. We haven't had cable for, you know, since I got tired of watching the news and getting lied to every day. And, and uh, you know, I, I just mm-hmm. we don't watch it. We don't watch that crap. And, you know, we have. You know, maybe Netflix and Hulu, in which you know, thirty bucks a month, twenty bucks a did month. Did you maybe. did you send me that but Drummond DVD, by the way? Since we're on that topic, I did. Sweet man, I I'm did. So excited, and it. I don't know. I, I put it like the cheapest way possible. <laughs> so <laughs> so I get it in December. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas. Christmas. That's all. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's stuff is so cheap now, and excuses. There's so many excuse eliminators out there, you know, by I, I've been Burger guys, Burger guys been saying this before I have, but, you know, buy gear uh, or buy tags instead of gear, buy opportunities instead of gear, you know, like it doesn't take much. I mean, I'm looking at um, Idaho and I'm it's less than a thousand bucks for all the tags and licenses and everything. Right, hold hold on, Garrett. Hold on. On that note, guy, do you start sweating when you hear? buy tags, not gear, since you're kind of the gear junkie. 
when we're talking. You no, know, dude, I have. <laughs> I'm no, kidding. I, I'm I have, totally kidding. Me. I have committed to myself. No, but I, that's a, that's a legitimate question, right? And I have I have a problem, guys. I know you do, <laughs> man. You, I, sometimes you post, but a I've committed and I'm, to I'm like, slow hey, that down. Look at all that gear he's got. Like he looks pretty damn <laughs> sexy and all that stuff. Like guy, I love. It don't it, help man. you kill nothing. It doesn't, but it don't <laughs> help you, kill you look good, dude. I love it. I love it. it. It's fun. It's, uh, it's fun though to experiment. Oh, absolutely! Mm-hmm. I love gear, dude. I can't. I, I can't yeah, I'm a I'm a gear junkie as well. Yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys both are. I, I think I, I think there's yeah, even a I level of, of Garrett. He's he's kind of a gear junkie too, and I, I feel like we're gonna start this year for you guys. I'm gonna be like the leader, and I it's gonna be <laughs> instead of Alcoholics Anonymous, it's gonna be Gear Addicts Anonymous, and I'm gonna give you guys a coin <laughs> for every 30 days that you go without buying a new piece of gear. That, that's well, I'm a not. perfect candidate because <laughs> I did the perfect arrow last year, and then this year I did it all over again. It's like why? Yeah. Why am I doing this? No, I no, yeah, that's a, that's a real life struggle there. <laughs> well, it's, hey, it's, can it's, I bring? It's, I want to bring some perspective to something real quick for before it, we lose it, right? Yeah. Because so Garrett Garrett was talking about the excuses, right? And and money is a big one. So then he had that's some interesting numbers, right? Ninety dollars every two hours. That's forty five dollars an hour. Right. Say for whatever reason you had the free time. Right. And you did that 20 days a month. That's seventy two hundred dollars. If you did it (laughs) just just when when you leave California and you go to Colorado and hunt and then drive back to California, give us an idea of what that costs you as a total package tag and all. Okay, so so you say call it seven, call it seven fifty for a year tag. I'm going to do the math here and then I'll, I'm going to go high on my gas and I'll say a thousand bucks since that was the number on our, on our gas. Okay. So right. we're, we're at I got my gear, right. I need my food. So you figure, you know, let's talk. An average guy is going to do seven days on the mountain. So right now I'm at 1750 tags and gas, uh, seven days on the mountain, call it two dehydrated a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's uh 14 <laughs> times, call it an average of $10. That's uh what a hundred and forty dollars? Yeah, it's a little bit cheap. Uh, little you can go cheap. Mount House. If Clearly, you're, you're to, not buying you, peak. No, no. <laughs> well, I, go Mountain House if we're talking about budgeting, yeah, right? Yep, go. Yep. I shouldn't say that. That's kind of jacked up. Go with the go with the less you know less costly. So now we're at eighteen ninety. Now. That's really what your cost is. Now, do you want to factor in your time off of work? Because that's another thing that I do. No, right? Well, that's my, that's going to be that's going to be super uh, related, you know, related to the individual. Because some people get like paid vacation. Like, I'll give you an example. Right. So that's I'm, very I'm true. paid a a salary, no matter how many hours or no hours that I work. Right. And and uh, b- because what what I'm paid on is a is like this this draw against my commission for my salary. So if I take a month off, it doesn't change my, my paycheck every Friday. Um, for somebody else, they might not have the paid vacation or the, but I don't get paid vacation because my, my salary never changes. So some people have right. paid vacation versus non-paid. Uh, Logan was alluding to that. So, so leave that out because you guys need to calculate that on your own. But if you wanted to over bloat that in guy's circumstance, let's say he wanted to buy some souvenirs and he stopped at, you know, um, subway sandwiches or something a few times, and and then over overly, I don't know, bought some peak refuels at the Mountain House. Let's call it twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred. How right. easy 2, is it bucks. for a grown man? And and I shouldn't say grown man. Um, let let me just put it into this grown mofo. Grown mofo. Okay. Um, let me put it into this <laughs> perspective in in a way that. Some some of you folks listening to this are are 25 years old. Uh, perhaps you're recently married with young kids, and 2,500 dollars is a lot of freaking money when you're that age. And 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 2,500 dollars can make or break you. You know what? Your kids aren't young for that long. It's like a blink. It's a blink, and they and they they start getting older. Don't sweat it, man. Just just hang. Just hang for a minute. But if it, let's say you're 30. You've got still some younger kids, but maybe, maybe not, you know, toddler, you know, a hundred dollars a month in diapers or whatever it costs them these days, probably with inflation, it's a lot more because I'm old. Um, 
all of a sudden you guys are going to look up, you're going to look up and, and you're going to be like me where I just turned 40 um, guy. I think, what are you 72, 73 now? Um, I can't, I can't remember <laughs> what exactly. No, no. I'm kidding. Um, I'm right about there, buddy. You're going to, you're going to hit this, this age where we're all of a sudden you hit 40 years old or, or whatever. Um, and, and you're going to look back and you're going to regret not putting the, the organization and financing together to do this when you were younger. OK, because it happens fast. Huh, guy, you, you go from 30 to 40 freaking fast. Everybody you know, talks about how fast dude, your it, 20s goes. Yeah. Your 30s, man. What what the fuck? I, I don't know what happened. It doesn't <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense. It well, doesn't make sense. How, let's just okay. you think you could do a mule deer hunt, a Western mule deer hunt for five thousand dollars. Let's just go around. I, I know I can. You have Hell to. yeah. I can go guide, damn near guided for five grand. Well, but, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, what's your deal <laughs> you're <laughs> for $35? If you're on a two-year plan, okay, one one to build points, you know, a year to build points and plan, okay, and then you're going to hunt the following year. What is there, 52 weeks in a year? Mm-hmm. Yep. Five grand divided by 52 is 97. That's $97 a week. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It, do, it doesn't – it's not that it, – it, I, and what's the cost of a monster or a Red Bull? There you go, right there. <laughs> you know, there you go. I mean, and a boom. pack of smokes or a can of chew. You know, like there's, uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's definitely feasible for an average blue collar person. Uh, if yeah. I, I'm proof of that, I'm just a dirt bag. Me too. Scum of the earth welder. You know, and uh, <laughs> that sounds that bad. Sounds but, bad. Uh, if I can do this, and anybody can do this, I want to give you a you know? hug or something. I mean, wait, well, it's not. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm be careful just, with that. You know, I'm just just a tradesman. I'm just a blue collar tradesman. Mm-hmm. How about that? Mm-hmm. But uh, if I can do this, if I can get out there and chase elk every year, then anybody yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah, great I mean, at, at the twenty five hundred dollars we were talking about, right? Twenty five hundred dollars. Even if you didn't save it three sixty five, and you just said twenty five hundred bucks over three hundred days, that's eight dollars and thirty three cents a day. Yep. Right. Eight dollars and thirty three cents a day. That is if you can, what a lot of people spend on lunch. Every yeah. day. Two Red Bulls. Yeah. Two Red I mean, Bulls. Coke, lunch, Monster, Red Bull. Cut the shit out. Yep. Go on the hunt. Yeah. Great point. Drink water. Not to mention you're going to be healthier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very for sure. Like, uh, like if you're spending that much on a, which on you're a gonna need Coca-Cola to be Coca-Cola on a pack of Marlboros, you're going to have a rough time in the high country. All right. Let, let's just be honest. Mm. <laughs> okay. I've had, I've had to make that drive with my hunting partner one year. We had to drive an hour and a half just for, you know, a log of a uh, coat or grizzly green or whatever. He's doing. So uh, he, he had to have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot to this, and and that's kind of I think we achieved a lot of what I wanted to get out of this episode, guys, for the audience, and and uh, you guys you guys are perfect for this episode. I mean, I I couldn't ask for better better dudes to get on this episode. I think a lot of people are going to get a lot out of this, so I appreciate it. Um, I kind of I were I didn't realize we're going on two hours, guys. Um, I thought we were like maybe an hour and ten, hour fifteen, but here we are. We're coming up to two hours, so we better close it out. Um, can you guys, let's uh, kind of give it, you're, you're in New York city on vacation and you're sitting on a park bench and some New uh-huh. Yorker walks up and he says, uh, you know, I'm looking to go out West to go hunting. What's, uh, what's, what's like your number one piece of advice you'd, you'd give somebody when, when they're traveling out of state, give, give us that rundown. Garrett, let's start with you. Uh, what's date? <laughs> Just that's, it that's, doesn't it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter what state it's it's going to be mm-hmm. more you know hey I'd love to go out I, I've been hunting deer here I, I you know in in the Big Apple or whatever they hunt in um, mm-hmm. what's that big park Central Park or whatever <laughs> I don't know if you can hunt there or not but anyway um, they've, they've never they've never left their home state they've never left their home state to go hunting and they're they're asking mm-hmm. you sounds like you hunt a lot man what what do you think I, I mean I've been thinking about it what's uh it's I, I'm a little nervous about it what, what can you tell me I would tell them um, man if you're looking at coming over here you better increase your effective range uh, if you're wanting to bow hunt you better buy some good boots. Boots are probably my number one suggested item to guys who've never hunted out west for guys who have just, you know, walked into a tree stand and they're wearing their muddy, whatever the hell they're called, boots. Yeah. Uh, rubber boots that go up to their knees. Um, Barrels. You know, there, there's a difference. Between, 
yeah, there's a difference between walking 10 miles in Idaho and walking, you know, a hundred yards to your tree stand in, in New York or, or even a mile in New York. I mean, it's just probably a little more likely to get mugged over there, but I mean, it's, it's just not the same. I mean, it's, it's just, if you have, I put it this way, if you have no, no feet, you have no hunt. If you're hunt, coming over West, you just can't go sit somewhere and just, you know, sit there for a week and a, a whitetail is going to walk by. It's mm-hmm. not how I hunt or know anybody else that hunts, but I would, um, I would, Onyx would be number one or two good, um, a good pair of boots that you've worn in prior to the hunt. And I would, um, start making phone calls and, and start, you know, suggesting a few States and, and there's, there's quite a few States that, you know, Oregon, you can come over here every year. I mean, really you can, it's not that hard to get a tag over here Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you're, you're less than a thousand bucks. Um, for even our most expensive, you know, elk is 588 for a non-resident and 172 bucks for a non-resident license. That's for elk. It's not, and so it's not, that's not have, actually not terrible. It's not terrible. No, no, no. And you, you know, depending on what unit you go to, you're going to have fun. You're going to see elk. You know, you're not going to most likely kill a giant and you're going to run into a lot, a lot of people. And, and I think just being willing to fail, um, you know, if, 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 punching a tag to you is, is, is failing, then be willing to fail and be willing to learn, but you're going to have fun and you're going to need to, um, yeah, good pair of boots. Onyx is a must or, or base map or whoever yeah. the hell you're, you're not sponsored by their gym. Not sponsored I, I'm by not, I don't have a sponsorship from either one. I just prefer base map. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Well, you got key. Now, Mountain House, Onyx and hot base all covered or <laughs> they're all going to call. They're all going to call. But, yeah, that's, they're, they're going to call. They're going to be like, dude, we're going to grow. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're in, you're in there. But um, yeah, if, if I, I, you know, I get these messages all the time and, and it's arrow setups and it's gear. It's always gear and arrows and boots and packs, bows, arrow setups. Those are the number one questions I get from guys that are coming over East. And will my arrow kill an elk? What do I need? You know, boot wise. And that's a question no one else can answer except your feet. Yeah. And unfortunately, you're going to have to go to the boot store and try on a bunch of them. Probably buy a couple pairs that don't agree with you when you put, you know, 30, 40, 50 pounds in your pack and walk. I mean, you you got to figure this out. I have a solution. Over here. I have a solution, Garrett. Hoffman Boots. Use promo mm-hmm. code Huntsman10. You'll be in good shape. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, got a, go. I got a question, Garrett. Beautifully so played. on on that on that topic, um, would you rather? be in the situation of about to get mugged in New York city or having a grizzly bear bearing down on you to protect our cub. Which one are you taking? Mugged me. Well, I mean, is it, is it the guy that um, is wearing, you know, ripped and wearing a dress? Are we trying, I mean, who's, who's doing the mugging here? I, I don't calling, know. You know. I don't know how to answer that. I feel like your survival is better <laughs> with uh, getting mugged. I, I, yeah, I, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I would say you're not going to catch me in New York. So by default, uh, it's probably going to be Wyoming when I'm getting mauled by a grizzly. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you're not going to catch me in NY in New York. <laughs> I, I got gotcha. you. If you I'm, do, you better take a picture. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. Now that's perfect. All right, guy, let's go to you yeah. with that same question, brother. Man, um, that's a that's a hard one, right? I, just just like I think it I doesn't would pose, have to be super deep. Just like you know, basic basic. Somebody you know is asking you randomly on you know wherever. Um, I I honestly my response is always when I'm posed that question, what are you waiting for? Right, because we we kind of touched on it earlier. The only thing that you're going to do by sitting there and pondering these questions forever is not go. And you're going to live in regret about not going as Garrett, you know, talked about a little bit ago. He's never heard anybody regret taking the leap. Um, so honestly, that is so true. when that question is posed. What are you waiting for? Mm-hmm. That's the best I got, buddy. You got it, man. I love it. I love Gear, it. I mean, it's all subjective. You know what I mean? Getting Gear mugged. is so subjective. I agree with Garrett. You got to. Oh, the getting mug part? Yeah, getting uh, getting I'll mug or, or grizzly man. Or like grizzly bear. I, I'll Jeez, give you my man. whole. Yeah, grizzly bear. <laughs> grizzly bear. I just hand. I'll hand you my wallet because me and Grizz got a thing, and uh, yeah, I'll just give the I'll give the the mugger my wallet, man. All right, I, I dig it. <laughs> I don't, okay, I don't, I don't want no part of the Grizz, man. buddy. I know. I, I, I'm kind of more worried about the grizzly bear than I am getting mugged. All right, Logan, you're up, man. Yeah. Give us your best. Uh, 
you know, somebody that's never done it before, what, what do you tell that guy or gal? Um, I would just tell them, uh, you know, buckle up. It's going to be fun, but uh, leave New York in New York. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yeah, that's, that's actually that's tell. actually some pretty profound advice, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, uh, you don't want to, you know, that's uh, if you're a non-resident, you know, kind of chameleon and blend in, you know, and spend your money at the local places and make friends at the local taverns, the hole in the wall bars. Like that's what's going to get you somewhere. Uh, like maybe a place to shower, you might make a friend. Like uh, I met somebody in Colorado years ago in 2014 and we've remained in touch ever since then. And he just invited me, he drew a goat tag in Colorado archery season and he invited me on that hunt. And it's just like, man, what an incredible opportunity to tag along with this man. He's 60 years old. He's going to do it with the stick bow. Oh, nice, and like, man. The fact that he, he sent me a text and was like, Hey, I drew my goat tag. Do you want to come? Like, man, that's just like talk about emotions for me, you know, mm-hmm. that's, that's uh, like, that's, I made it, you know what I mean? Like my dreams are coming true before my eyes, having that man invite me on that hunt. And that means the world to me. And uh, I hope I can make it. Like, I hope our di- our dates uh, jive together yeah. or whatnot, but uh, Dude, I, you I, like, I don't know. That's, that's all I got. You like struck a nerve there, man. That's, that's actually, uh, gosh, that's, that's, Super cool, and actually, I love this shit, Jim. You know, and thanks for having me on, man. You know, I mean, bow hunting is my life, so uh, like, <laughs> no, yeah, I appreciate I, it. I have one thing I there, Jim. Go ahead, Garrett. I, I tell that guy that he needs to listen to the uh, best podcast out there, the uh, Western Huntsman podcast. Oh, jeez, uh, you're mistaking that for the Hawthorn <laughs> Western Contours, man. I mean, no, oh, this is <laughs> this is what I love, guys. I mean, and and we talked about it, Garrett, on on that time. Um, when we were when we were talking about our woodsmanship and stuff, but we, we talked about how you know, like people with platforms, whether we're making knives or we're, we're we've got podcasts or we've got YouTube videos and all this stuff, you know, I, there there needs to be this this higher sense of communication and unification amongst us. But I want to, you know, th- there's a lot to be said for that, and I, I want to bring up something that Logan said real quick because that's something that that um, I I feel like needs to be kind of hammered home. If you are somebody, and I don't care what state you're coming from, and you're going to another state, be a good steward of that state. Represent your home state well. Mm-hmm. When you go into a bar and order a beer uh, or in, in a guy's place, you know, a White Claw, uh, make sure you're tipping the, the waitress <laughs> and, and the, the bartender. And when you go into a restaurant, you're tipping well. You're, you're cleaning up after yourself in your camp. And, and, and that is not picking on non-residents because there's plenty of residents that don't pick up their own camp. But if you are, make sure you're a good steward of the land. Take your trash. Take your garbage. Make sure you're cleaning up. Make sure you're tipping your folks. Make sure you're, you're, you're being kind to the residents and the non-residents alike. And, and just, you know, try to smile and, and spread your smile amongst everybody that you meet along uh, within wherever you're traveling to. And I think that that'll bode well. When it comes to some of this um, disgruntledness of, of non-residents coming to these states and hunting, and and that's always a big complaint. Oh, the non-residents show up and they trash our campgrounds and and uh, leave a big mess. And that's not necessarily true. Usually, that's a bunch of teenagers that are coming up for the Thursday night, you know, beer bong session, and they're leaving a bunch of shit. You, you know, usually when it's a hunter, and especially if they're traveling to another state, they 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 try to be respectful. Not always the case. But I would encourage you, if you are one of those people that are, you know, not always the case, uh, try to make it a point to to clean up those campgrounds and and uh, you know wave at people and and, and just everybody be nice. It, it, I, I just can't express enough. If everybody was just a little bit nicer, the the impact that can come out of that is profound. It's profound. So take Absolutely. take take that take that with what you will respect the people that you're, you're coming across and encountering and make friends like, like Logan was talking about. That's a great point guys. Um, okay. We're uh, over two hours into this Garrett, where can people find you? I know, I know we just released a podcast together here, but uh, tell everybody where they can find you again. I'm uh, uh, so, so in case we got some new listeners on this one, they can, they can track you down on point podcast with Garrett Weaver. 
Yeah, so it's uh, you said it uh, on point pod or on point with Garrett Weaver on Instagram. You can uh, Google my name for all the other content on YouTube. You can enter my, enter my name on YouTube on the search bar. Garrett Weaver, uh, two R's, two T's. Um, got like over 100 videos on that. Um, mm-hmm. Like we talked about last time, I'm on Pandora. It didn't take me a year to get on there. Like some lame people, I don't know. No, no, no. It took me a it took me over a year to get on Pandora, man. <laughs> But we're on there apparently. <laughs> like whatever. Oh, there you go. I just thought it was an uh, Idaho thing. No, that's that's <laughs> awesome for you, for you guys. They like, probably hey. found out we drink what we drink. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's either whiskey or Coors uh, Light. There's no white claws going down. Okay, <laughs> over here. I'm sending him to uh, you. Hey, you then, know what? I hope I hope he recorded all that white claw BS <laughs> in the beginning because he keeps this denial shit going. <laughs> <laughs> you gave me a complex, bro. <laughs> I, I'm serious here. We said this on, on Guy's Roundtable, but we need to get a pig hunt together. It's a low pressure. No one gives you shit hunt. Like, as far as I got to kill something, you know, like we all need to go get all these podcasters together and just have a great freaking time sometime. I think like, that'd be a ball. I've got a spot we can go do. That. Logan can hook yeah, us up. Like 10 of us out there. Yeah, get 10 of us out there. Let's just all have a great time, you know. Yeah, I, I'm so down. I think he's got, he's got room for eight. Yeah. Eight? We can make that. We yeah. can make that oh, happen. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah, and, uh, room for eight. I, yeah, you would not have to yank my arm very hard to get me over there. I will not drive. Sorry, guys. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyways, and so, yeah, um, that's that's where you can find me. And then if you want to email me for whatever um, reason, uh, Jim told me to do this. Uh, Garrett Weaver hunts at uh, Gmail dot com is my email. Apparently, everybody emails Jim. So if you want to <laughs> email me for whatever reason, that's that's where where you can email me at. But yeah. yeah, I appreciate the opportunity for being on here. And, and it's always nice to share podcasts with Guy. He's a great host. Awesome dude. I hope you guys go listen to Western Contours. And it was nice to meet him. And so, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, I, pre- I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Garrett. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. Um, guys, On Point Podcast is going to be that kind of show that will give you the focus and, the, and some of the discipline ideas that Garrett talks about while we were recording on this one. I really encourage you to check out that platform on the YouTube channel. Uh, Garrett's a great guy and he's super willing to share his experience and his knowledge. Um, definitely worth your time to, to give it a listen, give it a go. Um, guy, let's move to you, Mr. Western Contours, the dude that has the intro song that sticks into my head. And I have that music in my mind <laughs> for days when I listen to that, uh, when, when I listen to your podcast. Guy, tell us where we could find you and uh, leave us with uh, some some insight on that. All right, man. Uh, so Western Contours podcast, just about any uh, streaming platform. I do have a YouTube. I'm not yeah. as uh, well versed in YouTube as Mr. Weaver there. None of us are. So go to Garrett's YouTube page. <laughs> um, I am not either. <laughs> <laughs> WesternContours.com uh, is the website. Um, yeah, that's it, man. That's all I got on on social. It's uh, Western Contours, and then I have Guy underscore Western Contours, which I usually I don't really do much there. Um, but that's about it for me. Yeah, man. no, that's great. And and again, like I was saying with with Gary's podcast, Guy's podcast is really perspective of, in terms of like the hunting, um, kind of the the legacy or philosophical side of hunting. If if you if you're interested in that, Guy has a lot of insight to that, and it's super interesting every time to include those Sunday releases that you've been doing. Oh man, I owe you one of those, huh? I, I keep forgging about that. Yeah. The, oh, the, the, the reflections. Monday, yeah. yeah the, the reflections. reflections. Yeah. The f- reflections episodes that are coming out. So definitely check out uh, you guys podcast over at Western contours. Um, Logan, let's, let's wrap this up with you. Where can people find you? I know that you are, again, I said, I said it before, but you're my favorite knife maker and you're the only knife maker that I actually really like. Uh, cause the rest of them piss me off and, and, uh, <laughs> y- you're, you're talented. You've got a lot of skill. You've got a lot of talent and, and you're just a wonderful hunter that a lot of people can learn from that, that may not know that. So kind of tell us where we could find you. Um, and, uh, go from there. Um, thank you very much for having me, Jim. And thank you for all your kind words. Uh, I appreciate that it. It means a lot to me. Um, and it was nice to meet all you guys. It was, it's been a pleasure. Uh, awesome two hours to spend that. Uh, uh, had a fantastic time. So thank you. Thank you all for sharing this with me. Um, I'm mainly over on Instagram, um, Kill Elk Forge. It's, uh, there's an underscore between the Kill Elk and the Forge. Yep. Uh, yeah, I just post 
knives and, you know, dead things and stuff. I'm not too big on like posting on social media and stuff, but, uh, like, yeah, I don't I know. know. You're, Hit me you're, up. You're talk. I just got to keep it real. You need to post more of those videos of those knives cutting through shit. Because it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I don't, dude. It's <laughs> it's, so it's such cool. a saturated market. I know. I know. And like, I don't know. It's just, you know, I figure it's. I'm just a blue collar dude making things for blue collar people that are affordable. So, like, yeah, if you want a pattern welded blade that's affordable, hit me up. Uh, yeah. When you gave know. us a, it's you a, gave us a. I want to plug my own, plug my own shit, you know. But uh, you gave us a Skinner knife uh, to give away for our youth essay contest, um, and and they they really like that knife, and it it just I I just I awesome, appreciate man. that. Um, I appreciate you guys. Oh, well, we'll have to do it again, man. We're, we're gonna, man. We're gonna talk about it, and I, 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 you're gonna have to let me pay you for the damn knife next time because I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. Let me pay you, and I'd no, love no, to no, give no, one no, away. No. So That's, uh, great man, stuff. I, you know, I, I, I do raffles and donate the money to uh, like Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation or uh, Foundation for Wildlife Management and stuff like that all the time. Yeah. So I, I love to give back to the. You know, especially if it gets youth involved, like I am all about it for man. sure. I'm, so, I'm, I'm creeping your uh, Instagram here. I see Damascus replaceable blade. Yeah, I was just yeah, ripping out seriously? on that, man. <laughs> man. Hashtag don't Sorry, ask. Logan. I didn't know we had a bunch of stalkers on this show, so they're, yeah. they're already giving you the googly eye. Well, I started it because as they were naming themselves off, I was over here following their pages. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's well, awesome. Uh, you, but yeah, no, it's been a great time, man. And, uh, uh, I had. It's been just such a pleasure. So thank you very much. Yeah, it was a pleasure meeting you. Coordinating with Jim. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. This has been awesome. Yeah, appreciate the time, brother. You made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. We sure appreciate your support. This is Jim Huntsman signing off and reminding you to check us out at Instagram at The Western Huntsman and on Facebook at The Western Huntsman. And you can also check out the website at thewesternhuntsman.com. Thanks again. We'll see you guys next time. Stay Western, and I'll see you on the mountain.